Oh. All right, everybody. How are y'all? Uh, welcome to the Hero Forge Twitch stream. Our first one in a while. In a while, I know. I think the last uh, videos that are on here from when uh, y'all did some D&D &D games. Yeah, yeah, that must have been like three <laughs> years ago now. Gosh. We're, we're, we're blowing the dust off of this old Twitch channel, and we're having a special video because we, earlier, or last night, late last night, we just hit $2 million on the Hero Forge 2.0 Kickstarter, which is Utterly unbelievable. You all are so amazing. Thank you for, for loving and believing yeah, in our company support. and supporting us. Oh my gosh. It's so, so exciting to see just that everyone out there is as excited about this as we are. We have been like, I cannot <laughs> tell you how much I've been wanting to talk about our color feature, not only to my friends, but to people, and how exciting it has been to see it developed behind the scenes and in the works and now we can finally share it with you all and that's so that's like the best feeling yeah, utterly yeah we worked so hard on it and we're like we love this but is it gonna be received in the way that we hope and then th and it wasn't then some and our minds were blown and they continue to be blown so um so thank you everybody thank you yeah. but uh for those of you who don't know uh tegan why don't you go uh, ahead and introduce you, yourself um i'm i'm tegan i'm one of the original founders of hero forge some of you may actually have chatted with me like three, four years ago on on Twitch, back when we did the uh, the sort of the D and D stream, this was just when we were just forming as a company, and we we're like, let's just play some D and D online, say hi to peeps who are using Hero Forge. We've gotten a lot bigger and busier since. <laughs> uh, I quit my full time job at uh, Naughty Dog. I came off Uncharted Four as technical art director, and went to make miniatures full time and, and it's been just a wonderful journey and we've been adding so many cool things so yeah that's that's where i come from and how are you emily i'm good uh for those of you who don't know my name is emily jacobson and i am the social media manager for hero forge so i'm the person you're talking to on facebook twitter and instagram and i also do a little customer service on the side yeah, and then uh, just beyond here before, do you, you GM live? Oh yeah, I GM live. I'm actually GMing the finale of our Twitcher, uh, Twitcher, The Witcher RPG on Hyper RPG tonight. It was a four-part finale. Wow, so tonight? A, tonight. This is a busy day for it's you It's a busy then. day on Twitch Damn. for me. So yeah, I love GMing, and that's what honestly I love about Hero Forge is it's combining my passions, not only for social media, but for creativity, development, and just D&D and tabletop minis. So cool. Uh, and on our team yes. couch right now, Donna. Yeah. Hey, Donna. We'll have team members come in and out. They'll say hi, they'll wave. Um, we're gonna bring some of them up for talking about specific things. Uh, we're gonna try to keep this pretty casual. Um, is, is the chat stop scrolling? Can we scroll to the we bottom? We need to scroll so to the, the bottom can, of the chat. Yeah, it's yeah, not auto uploading. It there we go, um, there we go. Definitely wanna be answering as many questions from people in chat as we can. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll be giving a a, a live demo of the color UI later. Yee, that's right. So y'all uh, keep watching and keep tuning in. We'll be giving a live demo. Which is a little, a little nerve wracking for me. <laughs> I, I, I did a, a good portion of the, the coding for the color UI or the, the color process. And it's heavily in development, as you might guess. Uh, so showing it off so early is like, it, it's exciting and scary, but I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to that, that's for sure. <laughs> And if, yeah, if y'all have not checked out our Kickstarter recently, we just updated our stretch goals. Oh, good. So I see people in the chat talking about uh, the new mounts that are have been added to our stretch goals list as well. So that's oh, really exciting. Cool. Uh, one of the first questions in chat, which I like, was just, uh, why only 40K? Like, why, why oh, did we yeah. set the, the bar so low for the color Kickstarter? And I think that's, that's us estimating, like, the minimum bar for like, is it is it worth adding color? Do people want color enough? Um, if we hadn't funded that, we we really would have said, okay, it just people want to paint their own minis badly enough uh, uh, that this isn't a feature that's worth implementing. Um, so that was kind of the bar in which it became kind of worth it for us. And then beyond that, it's just uh, it's just a, there's a bunch of gravy. There's a bunch of amazing stuff that we really want to add to Hero Forge. Um, we're so excited to be increasing the size of the team. Uh, a lot of people don't know just how small Hero Forge is. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it, it's just 12 small. or 13 of us in the office here and uh, we're doing really technically challenging things and handling vast amounts of art and trying our best to, to, to make this as awesome as possible. So getting the boost on Kickstarter from the support of all the fans is just, is gonna allow us to ramp up in a 
just an amazing way. We, we want all these really cool things that people are always asking for. We want them too. We, we play D&D games where we're like, we're, we're playing with a, a, a snake person and uh, I, I can't get a mini for our own game. Can we, can we get on that? So, oh gosh, there's a lot of, there's a lot of good demands. <laughs> That's what's been so much fun about our stretch goals is seeing not only uh, y'all's excitement for it, but also our excitement behind the scenes. We're like, yes, we're getting there. We're getting there. Yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> we're finally, uh, finally get this thing in that we've wanted, that other people have wanted for so long. Um, and then uh, things are going to get even wilder, I think, as the final stretch goals come into place. I'm not going to promise anything yet, but there's some things that we just thought that we would not really ever be able to think about. The, the team would be always too small to, to handle. So pretty excited to, um, to make some even bigger promises in our stretch goals. <laughs> uh, so oh, hmm. I'm seeing questions and I'm seeing questions that are highlighted. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Uh, do all the additional features that are added to the minis are also added to the same features to the token maker? Do all the additional features that are added to minis also add the same features to Token Maker? Good question, and pretty much, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, uh, Token Maker is kind of an extension of the website in that now you can, you can use it in a different way. Previously, it was just sort of make a miniature, and we're really excited to cater to Virtual Tabletop, where getting good token representation of your characters is, is usually a kind of a difficult thing. It's, it's not easy to find the, the right art. Uh, we've played in person and online, and we've had that full experience, and keep finding ourselves saying, oh man, I did, we also want, we want minis online that work well too. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Donna! Yeah, you want to join us on yeah, the Yeah, come join us! Let's, yeah. let's talk. We're, We're going to... Just roll up a chair. Yeah, yeah. 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 Roll perfect, up perfect. A, like a nice middle chair. We are going to start kind of, kind of at the beginning, I guess, of like... It's going to be uh, maybe an hour, maybe an hour and a half stream. We'll see how far it goes. But we wanted to talk about the kind of the origins of Hero Forge, where we where we came from, how we started, where we're going, uh, and how that relates to the Kickstarter and uh, and ramping up production and all that exciting stuff. So, uh, Donna, you've been um, almost. I think you might have been the first uh, person. I think I was the first employee. Yeah. Yeah. So there were the people who started <laughs> Hero Forge. Um, and I was the first person where they were like, hey, we are really need to grow. Uh, we need some more hands on deck. Uh, let's bring someone on. So and that was that such was an exciting, me. exciting point to like, as this uh, starting off as friends and a Kickstarter originally, we made this thing that we wanted and loved over Christmas break. We were like, we want this thing to be real. We need it to be real because we play these games and we want to be able to represent our characters in them. Um, and to have gone from that to, oh wow, people, people, this resonated with people, they want it. They're, they're helping us fund it to, okay, now some of us can, can quit our jobs and, and work on this full time. And then we're actually going to a point that we're bringing new friends into, into the fold. Yeah. So yeah, that was when you joined. And T, and I think you were still working at Naughty Dog. Uh, back then when I joined and it was yeah. just me and three other people in one little office. Um, <laughs> Um, well, truth be told, it was a little <laughs> bit of a garage company at some point. We, we were figuratively working out of a garage. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but we quite quickly managed to get a little office and make it real. Um, uh, and you're, yeah. you're Donna, you're um, responsible for a large chunk of the uh, customer experience. Uh, your title of the company is Customer uh, Experience Director. Yes. <laughs> um, so How, how's that evolved? Oh, <laughs> it's really, you know, we've we've evolved so much as a company and we keep adding more and more things and getting more and more customers. And just as the scale of our company increases, I find I have more to do um, in my job because um, a lot of things need to be automated. A lot, a lot of things, you know, we want to give users more control over. So, um, you know, they don't. They don't have to contact us for certain things. They can just find what they want on the website um, and just make it as smooth and as easy for people to get the information that they need. Um, and yeah, my job in part is to just anticipate how like all these things that we're planning, you know, color, you know, tokens, um, other things, how they're gonna impact customers and how 
uh, what our customers new needs are going to be and how we can best address them uh, hopefully before <laughs> yeah before there are any problems mm-hmm. it, yeah, it is no not problems. easy to uh, to manufacture so many different miniatures and get them to the right people and there's a lot of logistical steps on the way that, that isn't like traditional re- retail when you buy a thing from from Amazon or somewhere else you're just uh, it's put in a box and sent to you we're making you a thing specifically for you and it needs to get to you specifically and it needs to be that exact one because it's it's unique it's 100 percent unique and yep. the number of like like customer service challenges and logistical challenges and shipping challenges that come with that are it's it's tough but we're constantly working to make it a better experience mm-hmm. <laughs> yep you said it very yeah. well. So, so thank you so much for joining us, Dana. Yeah, yeah um, absolutely. We'll be meeting a lot of different of the team members um, as we kind of go on and talking about a lot of stuff. Should yeah. we get some more uh, questions from chat? Sure. I have scrolled back up to the top <laughs> from when we started getting some highlighted uh, questions. Uh, did you expect that this Kickstarter would blow up this much? I think we knew that people were going to be really excited about color. I don't think we knew how fast people were going to be excited about color. Um, I felt like, uh, yeah, just within 20 minutes, that's when we hit our goal. And then in 10 hours, we hit $1 million, which is unbelievable. It, it was uh, beyond expectations. Um, and I'll, I'll describe the, the day one office scene, I think, where we, we'd had a lot of stretch goals planned. Uh, that are all already out there now, um, except these wild, exciting ideas that we'll still be announcing. But uh, we had a lot of stretch goals planned, and we were like, okay, we'll be hitting them gradually over the course of the Kickstarter, so we don't have to make the art for them quite yet. We haven't finished the art. We might not have captured whatever the work in progress dev version of it is, or made something representative of the of the Kickstarter goal. So day one, when it just, I guess, exploded um, in an awesome way, uh, we just the whole office was just like, okay, we need all of these Kickstarter goals made as 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 art, or we got to get that in, we got to represent it, and we got to get them in today. So I think more than half the uh, half the office was working on that at the same time. <laughs> yes, <laughs> which let was me, lots of fun. <laughs> let me see. Uh, for the portraits, for the portrait maker, will the portraits be available online for free? That's a, that's a really good question. Um, we're not 100% sure. Mm-hmm. Um, with Token Maker and its kind of like premium uh, features, we are for the first time exploring like what it means to uh, have a small subscription for uh, kind of bigger and better features. So it, uh, we're, we're still figuring that out. Um, it's most likely to be wrapped into kind of the Token Maker and the like here are all these tools that you can use for your own game and for a little uh, for a little cost have all of this awesome stuff awesome and then uh let's just do one more question uh was the establishment of color printing needed before the expectancy of the features that have become the stretch goals or were they planned regardless of color printing oh looks like we lost the oh, no. camera um we'll probably get it back probably yeah, there we go. Cool. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, can we can Yes, we that I can read again? that question again. Was the establishment of color printing needed before the expectancy of the features that had become the stretch goals, or were they planned regardless of color printing? Were the stretch goals planned regardless of that's color? Fair, that's fair. Um, first, it's fair to say that, uh, that Hero Forge 2.0 doesn't just uh, revolve around color printing. Um, this, for us, is a, a very exciting growth of the product, growth of the team, to meet the massive demands of uh, the things we want and what the team wants. So uh, there's a lot of blurry lines between color and Hero Forge 2.0 and uh, ramping up production and meeting all these demands. Um, but I, I did want to talk about the, the origins of color and kind of like how long we've been, I guess, looking into this, researching what it would mean to do color miniatures. I think it was sort of always the, the dream mm-hmm. to have these these real these real little colored, fully colored just come in the mail because our They're campaigns so nice. were too busy making Hero Forge to paint our own miniatures sometimes. Uh, the number of campaigns I've run where I'm like, here's a gray miniature, uh, extensive. So 
we've been eyeing this for a while, uh, and I, I definitely want to talk to Margaret, uh, yeah. who's hanging out on the team couch. Hello, Margaret. Ah, hi. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> um, yeah. you, you caught me. Yeah. Uh, or do we have the? Um, there we go. This one. Tell tell us about this one. This one's got uh, there's a history to this, right? Oh my gosh, yeah. I have uh, I have a copy of her sitting on my desk as well. As a reminder, um, this uh, this girl here is the beginning of beginning of color in a certain way. Uh, so uh, this was one of our earliest tests that I did. Um, do you want to just pull up a little photo yeah. of my yeah. mic's here? Which is the which is the camera? No, there's a camera. There <laughs> <is>. Hi. <laughs> yeah, zoom on in. Um, so uh, Elf Explorer was a character that I put together, and she's kind of hung around in Hero Forge as like a test character for much longer than I anticipated. Many years now. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I really I put her together because like we needed. Uh, to test out color and we needed to like an example of every material we could possibly think of so she's got a little bit of everything she's got fire glass leather cloth wood and metal and everything and so i built this character and i brought her into zbrush to paint her um and just made some custom color maps now this was this was years ago, like three years ago. At yeah, least. that was about that was about right. Uh, this, uh, for some context, this is uh, a full three D color print, but represents a technology that we're not using for the miniatures. Um, I can't remember what exactly which one this was printed in. We have numerous at this scale, uh, but it wasn't quite ready for something kind of this small. Um, yeah, I I was really pleased to see how it turned out at this scale, but yeah, it. Uh, Years ago, like the color printing tech, it just wasn't up to snuff. I, I have a I have a version of her that is this big. It is one of the few that survived. It's is rough. It's a little rough around the edges. Um, but it it was just amazing to see like these the color prints that we have now. Are, it's come so far. Um, we we've basically this. just been working so hard with uh, manufacturers to figure out when that threshold of viability is like, when can we finally get something fully printed at this scale, this little scale? And a lot of our early tests were at larger scale because that's the only thing you could print at. So we very much anticipated this. We were very excited to mm -hmm. like basically get smaller and smaller. Ah, yes, we got it. Um, and we're just thrilled at the quality of, of what we got in the latest. Yeah. I have a question for you, Margaret. What's up? What has been your favorite release to work on on Hero Forge? What has oh, been gosh, your been favorite feature that uh, we have released to help work on and develop and to see it published oh, on the site? Oh, you asking <laughs> hard questions. Um, it's, a, it's, what, it's what the people want to hear. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I am a character character creator person. Like, I, I love organic sculpting. Um, it says character creator person yeah, right no, on your business it, card. I, actually, I think it says muddler because I didn't really care about titles when I picked my business cards. I sort of regret that now. Um, the, uh, so, um, on a smaller scale, uh, I always love sculpting hair. Like, hair, it's so organic. It flows beautifully. It's very sculptural. Uh, I, I just, I love it whenever we put out hair. And I love that other people love when we put out hair because it really, it does a lot for the character. Um, and, you know, I, it's the kind of thing that I work on whenever I can. Um, on a bigger level, um, my centaurs were pretty cool. I like centaurs. Centaurs were a big one. <laughs> um, yeah. The, the number of conversations surrounding like how many rib cages does a centaur have? Does it have internal organs in both? Was just that was some How will centaur wear, wear pants? Was legitimately. <laughs> these were the hard questions. No, these were the legit hard questions uh, that we are still answering to this day. Where did the jeans go? Yeah. I don't know where the jeans go. Uh, we'll figure it out. <laughs> Since our jeans release. Um, that, so. that was a very fun one. And also an incredibly artistically and technically challenging one. Yes. Yeah, it was. we were trying a lot of new things when we did that. But um, I'm pleased with how it turned out. I'm glad other people liked how it turned out. Um, I saw like some people releasing some like really cool characters after our uh, Kobold uh, release the other day. They were using the horn as a kind of a makeshift rhino horn. <laughs> Those were so cool. It made me so happy. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got uh, uh, someone was reaching out to us on Twitter about uh, giraffe, giraffes. 
on on Hero Forge, and she said, "Oh, actually, I was able to take your centaur and stretch out the neck to a bit to make it giraffe esque." And I was like, "Well, feel free to to add your suggestion to our, our request wish list, which we pull from uh, for adding new features to our site." But also, I'm glad to hear you stretch the neck, and that was working for you. <laughs> People love, I love it when people get creative. <laughs> that is a level of creativity I didn't anticipate. That's awesome. The creations y'all have come up with have, just, have been blowing our minds. We'll share them around the office constantly and just be like, check it out. Someone managed to like use advanced posing on the tail and put an item in the tail and pose the tail through the face to get a long lizard tongue, that kind of thing. And it just, it, it's all uh, beautiful and amazing to see that kind of creative creativity put into stuff. Yeah. Um, so yeah, thank you so Thanks much, Margaret. Thanks so much for having um, me, Margaret. And, uh, I, yeah, keep up, keep making amazing stuff. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so what were we? We were talking about Hero Forge's origins, and mm -hmm. then sort of the origins of color, and these early days of experiments that we've been doing for for years now, um, and finally getting to that point where manufacturing tech was, was able to get the size and the vibrancy and the fidelity that we needed to be like, yes, this is a this is a good token for the tabletop. Yeah, um, this works. Uh, I'll, I'll admit I'll, I'll only be ordering color miniatures from this point onwards just because my painting days, I just, I, I don't have the time anymore. <laughs> I really like it too because uh, I've always wanted to get into painting, but the thing that holds me back from painting is not knowing which colors will look good and the fear that oh if I paint if I paint my mini already with one color and I regret it I'm gonna have to take it off again and try it or and then add in different colors so that's why I'm really excited about our Hero Forge yeah, 2.0. Yeah it's fair oh, to say even if you love painting this hopefully you can, just helps. Yeah you can use it as a paint planner so I can try out different color combinations and like oh well maybe if I what if I added a, this brown was like a little bit darker or, oh what if this brown was like a little bit lighter and I can make those choices before I, <laughs> I anxiously start to paint. <laughs> And we're trying to kind of accommodate just where everyone's coming from. You have people who love to paint and just want to keep doing that, and we want to support that. I, I used to love love to paint all the time. I don't have, like competitions for painting. Uh, so we want to be there. If you're playing online, we want to support that. If you just want a token that beautifully represents your mini in full color, we want to represent that too. So, Or even if you're just theater of the mind, we want to get Hero Forge color portraits on your character sheets. So, Heck yeah! Yeah, like wherever you come from, if you play tabletop RPGs, like we're there because we we've, we've done all of that too. We've played all that type of RPG. And oh, totally. <laughs> all right. So we were talking about getting into color. Mm -hmm. um, we will be showing the UI a little bit later, um, but I did want to talk about sort of our our art pipeline, um, and it's a thing that keeps coming up because we get so many requests. What's happened is we've hit the main notes, like we've hit all the main like uh, tabletop RPG races, and uh, we've hit all the expected armor classes and so on. And once we've hit these basic notes, the kind of requests get more and more expensive. So we have thousands and thousands of requests in the part request form, which I expect has probably been posted uh, in chat already. I see it there, yes. <laughs> and, and we want so badly to have these things and to uh, uh, and to make them, but it needs to be a very kind of deliberate, careful process that's you know, putting out really, really good content. Content. We don't want to put anything out that's sort of that falls short of people's hopes and expectations in terms of art quality and uh, how mix and match it is with stuff. So it takes a long time to develop. Um, and I'd love to talk about just like our art, art, art pipeline uh, and uh, bringing on Nora. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm say art. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I this said Nora, your name. <laughs> <laughs> Hello there. Uh, no, you're uh, Hero Forge's art director. Yes. And uh, a huge portion of the content goes through you. It does. And there's a lot of content, <laughs> <laughs> as you can imagine. Hi, everybody. Uh, this is your time, chat, to, to get all your requests in the chat. Just, just get, get them all in there. Um, I'm, 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 I'm kidding. Oh, no. <laughs> um, I'm kidding. Uh, we have a, a request form, and we do very carefully collate it and and look at the most requested things so that we can make the best decision to make the most people happy. Um, so uh, we're, we're doing our best. Uh, mm -hmm. Part of the Kickstarter success leaves us just grinning with excitement for our ability to ramp this production up. It does, and I cannot even tell you how excited we are as an art team, um, and to work with all the artists we're going to be working with and have worked with. You can imagine how fun it is to be able to 
help create all these pieces for all of our users, all these user requests, just in so many different directions and with just really gorgeous quality to be able to mobilize so much of that, especially after this Kickstarter, like enabling that to such a great degree. It's it's a huge, awesome, wonderful responsibility. Very fun. And, and I think we should probably talk about just how like large the pipeline is to get something in, how many steps things need to go, because mm -hmm. we want to make them, them beautiful and uh, bug free and as effective as we can. So like, where does that start? Yeah, so take <laughs> us on a journey. Oh. <laughs> Let us, we're climbing into your boat and you're gonna <laughs> take us on this boat ride that is the Hero Forge artistic journey. Uh, away we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, it definitely starts with um, the concept stage is basically where everything starts. We, we do look at user requests. Of course, we look at this user request form um, to take all that information together to really figure out what we want to target first, uh, most popular things, we want to make sure we get those out pretty quickly. And there's also other random requests that we want to make sure we, we hit. You know, we want to hit a little bit of all across the board. Um, we then go into concept art stage where we want to develop the look of our pieces, make sure that's really strong, really high quality. Um, and then from there we take it to the sculpting stage in 3D. We have a lot of technical requirements on Hero Forge to make parts work with other parts. It works on a phone, like an old phone, like a four-year-old <laughs> phone. You can load up Hero Forge, it's f and, and I don't think I've ever seen a, a site on the web with 3D as extensive as at least the color stuff that we're adding. Mm -hmm. It's new to me too. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, so we want to make sure that everything works and plays really well together, and that the quality is really, really high. We have all sorts of things internally on the art team that we have to make sure work for the parts before we release them. We need to make sure that things play nice with gloves. We have different um, systems in place to start building out tuck forms and digitigrade forms. If you switch to eagle legs, you want to make sure that those pants change. You know, we've got so many little things we need to consider to make sure that the final product works well for whatever character you want to We've create. got such a variety of races on Hero Forge, and the head shape variety in there is, is extensive. We have to make every hat work with every head, and we have <laughs> probably more than 100 different hats at this point. Right. It's, <laughs> there's, there's so many, and there's so many more that are coming up. Um, we just have a, a wealth of content that's, that's going to be coming up. I future. think there is a question for you, Nora. Uh, in regards to art, where does the inspiration come from? Uh, do you try to em embrace or stay clear of established art from popular tabletop RPGs like D&D? That's an excellent question. We, as far as when trying to figure out the artistic direction of the pieces we're going to make, there's a couple camps that it falls into. Number one, if we have historically accurate armor, which is a huge request that we get a lot, we want to make sure that we're serving that market in that we're getting those pieces as right as we can in a Hero Forge world. Beyond that, for any creative pieces we're making that are in totally fantasy, completely made up, we want to make sure that users are getting a range of art that they feel can fit in their tabletop world, whatever that might be. And maybe that means heavier armor with really, really strong silhouettes coming up. Like that, that kind of content is going to be there for people that have tabletop games like that. Maybe something a little bit more down-to-earth fantasy. We want to make sure we're offering that as well. So, as usual, we're serving many masters here <laughs> and, and, and trying to get that all to users. We do a lot of research to make sure that our art, which we come up with is, is unique, hits the, the kind of notes that people are looking for. It's about like meeting that demand for, um, I play this anthropomorphic character um, that is an animal slash slash humanoid, um, what are they expecting for that? So we try to try to hit a note we best we can uh, and not cater specifically to any one um, tabletop RPG. Fair enough. That's good. Yeah. Heck yeah. It's a good question. It's a great question. And just to get a little technical on our pipeline. Yeah, go for like, it. We, that's, we hadn't finished the pipeline yet. That That's <laughs> my deal. Uh, I, I come from a technical art background, so it's all about how, to, how does it work behind the scenes. Um, I, one thing that I think isn't even an obvious on the website is we make a print version of the mesh and a website version of everything that we put on the site. So in order to load really fast on a phone to be super responsive to to work at frame rate on the website, we have like basically a low res version that's that's uh, optimized as best we can and then 
when we make the final print mesh, we have a second version that's super high res that has all the, the physical detail in it and not just uh, rendered detail uh, in order to kind of hit all the notes and depending on what the medium we're kind of targeting for. Um, there's a lot involved in that. A lot involved in that. And that's making sure that art that comes down from sculpting and such, you know, to use a more technical term, the art that's created in 3D, we need to make that low res version as well on the site. And that's part of our process as well, along with skinning, um, prepping for various technologies coming up. There's, there's so much to consider. Yeah, let's not forget about the skinning part. We make the art and then we have to make it work on basically virtual bones so that you can pose it wherever you like, but also so that you can change your body's height, morphology in all these different ways. There's a lot of ways that like this art can get morphed once it's added. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, we, we're talking a bit about our upcoming races a bit as we've mentioned them on the Kickstarter, but mm -hmm. some of these races coming up have really complex faces. How do we make sure that glasses work on this race? We have to prepare for these eventualities yeah. we, in all the art we create. So the fidelity has to be high, but it needs to be flexible. That's um, a lot. A Vorpal board in chat asks, are we going to make more mounts? We just added that stretch goal to the mm -hmm. Kickstarter. Um, both mounts and familiars are an interesting thing for us in terms of user requests, because the, there's such a variety of requests out there. There's, there's a massive amount of, ma of variety. So any one mount we add like caters to actually a very small number of users for the most part. Um, and then on top of that, uh, like buying a miniature with your mount um, because of the printing cost is actually quite expensive. So we just don't see the sales in that in that direction. Um, so we've kind of like been like, I um, we can't really quite meet this de demand practically. There are other things we want to focus on first, but the Kickstarter has given like as enough of a boost that we can grow the team and actually like get a bunch of mounts out there. So we're, we're excited. There have been some great mount requests too. I, I see them all. I see, you know, on a side note for that request <laughs> list. Speaking of which, we actually yes. got a question. Oh, okay. uh, for each of you, what is your favorite fan-made feature or fe uh, feature request? What is your fan favorite? Fan-made feature or, or I feature request. I would say, yeah, what is your favorite feature request that uh, you've oh. seen or one that, I guess, sticks out in your mind? I mean, I'm going to mention one that I know is requested that is that is something we want to do, which is bagpipes. And I always <laughs> thought that that would be pretty cool. And I know that that has you know, tech requirements to it as well, but bagpipes is cool. <laughs> Even bagpipes is just the, the can of worms that, that opens up in terms of like, how do you get interactions between these parts and all this other part of the, the miniature? That's, that's, that's complex, but complex. We'll, we'll manage to hit that one day. Yes, one day. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm Scottish originally, so I, I feel like it's only fair. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, hi, Ozai in chat. Hi, hi, Blondie. Hi, other people. It's really nice to see some familiar names kind of joining us for, for the stream. Um, some people who have been with us for, for many, many, many years now. Uh, <laughs> yeah. What about you, T? And what is, uh, what is one of your favorite requests you've seen fans asking for? Oof. I've seen a lot and I've gotten excited about a lot of them and I've implemented a lot of those features when it's a feature request. Um, I have l less ability to get the art through just because of that big pipeline involved. But um, generally, the way to get stuff made is to put it in the part request mm -hmm. form, and at some point, it'll be it'll become a priority depending on how many people are excited about it. The other way, the much more difficult way, the way that requires a big roll of the dice uh, in terms of features is posting it at uh, midnight on Sunday and I just happen to be looking at the Hero Forge like <laughs> Creators Guild form or like some of our social media and there's a request and I'm like I bet I could implement that like like right now I bet I could and before I know it it's like 3 a.m. and I have the basics of this feature um, that that exact thing um, happened uh, with multiple arms recently. Yeah. Um, I saw a post, I was like, you know what, maybe we can really do that. Um, so I put the kind of the experiments in place to make sure that it was possible. And that was purely based on just someone passionately being excited about this feature um, on, I, I think, the Hero Forge Creators Guild. So mm -hmm. um, so that's, a, that's my favorite, most recent one. I, I love the excitement people bring to wanting these things that are so kind of close to their heart. And when they're like a technical challenge in nature, I'm like, okay, that might be really hard. I'm going to try to do it. So. <laughs> there you go. And Tegan does it. 
<laughs> and you go into work the next day and we're all there and you know we're like well suddenly there's multiple alarms yeah like oh, i made this thing that was there done. it is and it works yep. really nicely um although like the the journey for these features is is so extensive um multiple arms is a good example because you can get the basics. It seems like, oh, just add more arms. We've got some arms, we'll add them. You can get the basics pretty fast, but the like rippling effects that that has on this vast library of options that Hero Forge has is extensive. So It's a huge rippling there's effect. There's a lot of work to do on that. Like, How do you make a coat that we already have art for work for <laughs> up to, uh, in this case, six arms in total uh, and still look good? There's, uh, there's, there's a lot. <laughs> And if you have a guitar being held with two arms, you know, it's, it's figuring out those sort of like, where does it, where's the line? Where, where do you sort of figure out? Nora, Nora, yeah. tell, tell us about Trevor Toulouse. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> so in a nutshell, um, using the Hero Forge creator myself, I went to D&D with Tegan and others. Very fun session. I had to make my character. I decided on a male character, and the Hero Forge creator led me to my character. I had one loot in my hand, and we had back items, and I had a loot back there, and I'm like, that's two loots, Trevor, two loots. I'm going to make a really dark backstory behind this about oh why my he has gosh. two loots. I think it's one of my fa most memorable characters I've, I've ever gotten to play with was Trevor, two loots, and it was just like, oh, I can put that... I I could put also a loot there. What if he had two? What if he had two? Why does them, he have two? One of them was cursed. I think <laughs> he'd killed someone with it. It got dark. It was very dark. Oh my gosh. He might have murdered another bard that might have been better than him. But <laughs> murder is such a strong like word. Like you do. <laughs> like I, you do. I want to bring up Trevor Two Loots specifically because I also want to talk about Trevor Twelve Loots. Oh, no. oh, oh gosh. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but oh yes. Oh, <laughs> so this was back in the early days of Hero Forge when there were far fewer features. It was that you could have a back item and a, and a, and a held item. Yeah. And, and that was... Free loots probably would have been the maximum number. It could have been Trevor free loots. And I didn't go that far. I'm like, two loots is funny. It, it That's rolls fun. off the tongue. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. it's kind of nice. Three loots yeah. kind of... That's too many. Yeah. Clearly, that would be, that'd be yeah. crossing a line. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, what we've been doing slowly is adding more and more places you can add this big, big library of, of items. You can hold them now. You can put them on your back. You can put multiples of them on your back. You can... Uh, hold them in your tail, you can hold them in your elephant trunk, um, soon you'll be able to hold them in your uh, octofolk tentacle face. Um, so uh, at some point soon, like, we'll have reached the echelon where it's a Trevor, Trevor 12 loots. And I think... And he'll be back. And he'll, he'll be a one-man band. <laughs> <laughs> and it'll make you wonder exactly what happened. Yeah, how did he get 12, 12 loots? Something really dark happened. That is indeed too many loots. <laughs> or he went into loot manufacturing. Yeah, he's just trying to sip on them all. Yeah, we're going to have to figure out that backstory. That's crazy that we can make 12. <laughs> so. <laughs> so I'm excited to get that. It's been, it's been so cool to add like just this explosion of features that have allowed us to hit these, these wild characters. And they're just going to get wilder. It's going to mm -hmm. get bigger and wilder. I can't wilder. wait. I... Yes. That's such a, yeah, that, that's what's so much fun about Hero Forge is, yeah, I have created so many just new characters and NPCs for my campaigns just by going on a Hero Forge and yeah. playing with the character creator and playing with different races and, and outfits and hairstyles are like, why would this, why would this Triton be early out? Why would this Triton be wearing this outfit? Or why is my barbarian look so fancy and nice? And right. yeah, I feel like color is going to even like just cause that to explode even more. Yeah. As art director, I can't wait does to these configs that people come up with. I, I love seeing them. I love seeing the creativity of our entire support base, like just everyone coming up with their creative, you know, takes on characters on Hero Forge. It just lights up my life. I love it. And I love being able to supply like for direction in, in all art areas for what we're going to be giving our users. We have exciting stuff in the works beyond what we'll even be talking about in the Kickstarter. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can't say things. <laughs> But very excited for our community. And we've really spilled a lot of beans with the Kickstarter. We really right? have, yeah. It, it, in a way, it was kind of like a, a pressure relief valve for all these things that we know we were, had in the pipe and that we had to go through the careful QA process so that we made sure they were maximum quality. Yes. And we were kind of 
planning them and like finally we're like oh wait we're just gonna like tell you all the things we're working on right now oh, yeah. like yeah. so on the kickstarter you can see like a grid of these things in the works um like what up post hey um like the, like the opto folk that are coming along mm -hmm. uh, for example that we're just, <laughs> just yeah, you that's, you that's, my little, that. that's my little action now and the sneeple the sneeple i'm we're so sneeple. excited for our snake folk our sneeple oh. we've been calling snake folk sneeple in house for a long time i, I don't it. i don't know where it started it's just making me laugh <laughs> it's so good i'm really excited for that yeah, I I, uh, I believe post actually you were the one who played a snake character. Yes, my favorite character. And if you well, oh, thank you so over, much, yeah. Noah. Thank thank you, you guys. And thanks for telling us about Trevor Chulu. Yes, of course, anytime. <laughs> He'll be back. You played a a snake folk. Yes. And you used back in the day. Here, get in. Yeah, because yeah, there's a mic. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Um, <laughs> you you did the best you could with what tools we had, which is like the same experience a lot of users have when they're like, I, I'll just, I'll make the closest I can. Right, right. Uh, there weren't uh, any of the new options we've been teasing for like a snake looking body. Uh, so he was like a very low, uh, low level snake folk. He, he wanted to be more snake like in pursuit of the <laughs> god Seth. Uh, Chris, uh, if you're, uh, you're up for, uh, Chris has been manning the stream actually, come say hi for a second. Um, and we'll meet Chris a little more later, um, and has helped, has done a large portion of the, the Kickstarter as well. Um, mm -hmm. If you're up for changing to the dual screen so we can get a little UI going on, I might as well. Ooh. I have Snake Folk up on my laptop right now, so. Give you all a little we'll, sneak Yeah, we'll get a little. Ah, oh, I'm a sne so funny. A sneak peek. A sneak peek. A sneak peek. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, first, I guess, before I do anything in this UI, I should say. This is a highly work in progress build of Hero Forge, and its likelihood of crashing uh, is very high. It hasn't gone through the usual extensive quality assurance that we do when we do a full release. Um, oh, first, uh, can we introduce? Let's introduce oh, Post, sorry, Andrew yes. Post. Oh, yes. Hi guys, I'm, I'm Andrew Post. I'm a front end developer here at Hero Forge. Uh, I've been here for about three years. Uh, I'm also moderating in chat. Uh, when I go back to my desk, I'll be at Post, Post, Post. <laughs> nice. <laughs> And you've you've worked on numerous UIs related to uh, Hero Forge and other products as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, we we've got a couple other products. Uh, I'm I'm uh, really excited about all the things we've been able to do with 3D printing. I'm wearing some 3D printed jewelry we made through a sister site. Uh, but I know you're all here to talk about Hero Forge. So I mean, you you did say you're wearing it. You, we could mention it. <laughs> sure, sure. So uh, Charmsmith.com uh, is our uh, youngest sister site. Uh, it's for 3D printing custom jewelry. Oh, I have a necklace from there on as well. Yeah. Mine's a little D20. Wow, I'm ready for that. <laughs> um, so we've got a, a, a lot of these in-house. I, I love this one. It's the, the symbol from the flag for the, the live-action role-playing game I play out in East L.A. Um, so I, I do uh, a lot of the interface on Charmsmith also. Yeah, and the revamp of the cart was kind of your your baby. Ah, uh, yeah, ways. yeah. I, I know that that's something that all of you Hero Forge fans are really excited about. Highly requested <laughs> on the request form. Yeah, uh, I, I actually thought about answering. Uh, someone in chat asked earlier, "What's the the favorite user request you ever got?" And one person did request uh, a better cart one. So thank you. Oh. <laughs> Uh, but we really wanted to streamline the whole process, uh, and with that revamp, you were able to add features that people wanted that um, we needed to run our own cart in order to do. So. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a very weird e-commerce platform because every product is custom, and you can't just show a stock image. You need to show a, a, a screenshot you generated just then. Uh, gift cards work in an unusual way. Uh, people are able to share configs if you want to change something you already had in the cart. That there are a lot of really special. Oh, thank you. It's a good cart post. Everybody's loving that Aww. cart post. <laughs> uh, thanks. Thanks, Home <laughs> Um But let's definitely show people the exciting things that they can buy uh, now that the cart is so easy for buying things through. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, let's let's switch. Um, so back to, back to this right. highly experimental build of of Hero Forge and. Like, uh, obviously we got color working to the point that we could put out the Kickstarter video. Mm -hmm. It was like his sort of demos of it. Um, I, I don't have like a script and what I'm going to be clicking. We just happened to talk about snake folk. So I will, uh, I'll at least show you kind of the, yeah. the latest on those. <laughs> 
Um, I don't. I might run into problems. Uh, I don't know where they are. If there are problems right now, um, but we have we had a lot of fun with snake folk. I mean, it's massively technically challenging, and just from a posing standpoint, from uh, still getting the body morphology to work. Uh, but gosh, what a good challenge! Um, and we have the every variation you'd kind of expect in there. Finally, um, Coc, your D and D character, can. Yes can live like can reach their their dreams of being a full snake person yes coc is going to be able to take off the blonde wig and the fake mustache and embrace uh his his snakely essence lovely That's lovely one. uh and we'll uh well thank you so much for for joining us post yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah thank you and we'll we'll get a little uh we won't bring anyone else on for now we'll get we'll get in depth with the UI okay, awesome we'll, we'll huddle in um, let's do it and, uh, and uh, Emily will field questions from chat as we kind of go and sort of guide you through our, our hopes and dreams for the color UI. Yeah, so if you have a question, uh, please uh, ask it at Hero Forge on Twitch. It will highlight on our screen and I'll be able to read it better. Thank you. Perfect. <laughs> uh, and Chris, if you do want to size the text slightly down so it's not so sticking together, there's a little settings down the bottom right. Um, cool. Uh, well, this is our, uh, our experimental build. You'll notice along the way that a few things have like a QA tag on them. Um, mm -hmm. This is a little a little sneak peek of the things coming pretty soon um, over the next couple of months. That's what I mean by pretty soon, I guess. Um, so you'll also see that we have uh, we have Octo Folk working. There we go. Uh, we haven't fully like figured out Ooh. all the bugs yet with uh, holding things in tentacles, which is exciting. Uh, but yes, your Octo folk should be able to work out um, or, <laughs> or add Oh, what, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or add whatever we need to there. Um, but you're not necessarily here for these little, these little things you'll see these QA tags on. You're probably here to see the color UI. Um, which, so we'll, uh, we'll go into that um, and probably at least put something on so it's not... Um, not just the default character. There we go. This is a good one. This is some nice bold colors here. So our first question: uh, Can we see some um, some of the multi limb options? Oh gosh, do you want me to crash the UI right off the <laughs> bat? Um, maybe. Um, uh, I I I. Uh, they're not in this build, unfortunately. Actually, um, I, I wish they were. Uh, they're just not quite far enough along. Um, we, for all the stretch goals on the Kickstarter, are indeed stuff enough that we were very confident in them. We don't want to add anything to the stretch goals that we can't deliver on. We want to make really solid promises and do really, really solid features. So we are, are indeed them that far. But uh, there's, like I was talking about earlier, there's so many mm -hmm. complications when it comes to integrating something that complex into an already very complex system. So um, unfortunately not, I think. Oh, good. <laughs> um, I'm gonna add a few things just in the hands, just a demo from from for later. Yeah. Um, and do, do people know we added search? We totally yeah, added search. We have you a... can just you can just add a thing. Um, Let's see. Hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna do this. Okay. Was that oh, really good. I like that. I, li I like the sphere because I'm gonna be showing off some material options later. Oh that, yeah. Um, they're gonna be pretty cool. <laughs> All right, so getting into color, now that we're now gonna play around in it. So for the online painter, has there been thoughts on simulating different lighting conditions, i.e. normal indoor light naturally naturally comes to mind for getting perhaps a more realistic idea of the actual uh, end result? Uh, we hope that the, the, the sort of tie between what you see on screen and what you see in your hand is kind of appropriate. Um, we want to create uh, a pretty neutral lighting environment in the creator, so you're not surprised at how it ends up looking in your hand. Um, and you can see uh, the whoforge.com slash kickstarter uh, angel that we've kind of used as the figurehead. Um, and here it is right here, yeah. Oh, wait, was that the good one? Which, is, which ones are we looking at? That, yeah, this one, I think. Th this actually is a perfect demo of our lighting changes. Um, so, uh, we have uh, we've done a lot of experiments with like how do we simulate lighting on a miniature? Um, how do we mimic the techniques that a professional painter would be using to bring out the detail to make metal look like metal? How do we make it look like it's shiny even though we're kind of printing in a matte kind of color? Um, and 
these are two such sort of experiments. Uh, here you have one without any lighting detail painted in at all. So the metal ends up kind of looking a little flat because metal is nearly all reflection of the environment. Uh, and over here is one with a degree of lighting kind of painted in. So uh, miniature painters with washes um, and deliberately will kind of get darker in the cracks just to hyperemphasize and pop uh, detail. Uh, and we're currently sort of fine tuning how to get the best results kind of in your hand um, and how uh, what you see on screen can kind of match expectations. I hope hopefully that answers that that question um, But I should start sort of from the beginning of what we want the painting process to be yes the The challenge of adding color to Hero Forge was particularly unique compared to other character creators In video games you generally are making things with color from the start It's a big mm -hmm. part of the color character process and you also don't have anywhere near the amount of control that you would if you were hand painting it so how do we let you get color and get all the control you'd want from hand painting it? That's a lot. There's a lot of choices there. And we've also got a very extensive feature rich UI already. So like there's a lot in there already. So we're like, okay, how do we simplify this and make it as fun and, and pleasant and simple as possible? Um, generally, that's always the challenge. We, we make very, very complicated things very easy to use and produce really good results really fast. Um, so the way we wanted to do that um, we're like, okay, how many clicks should you be able to make a miniature in color? And we're like, okay, two seems about right. <laughs> that would be ideal. Um, you're, you're pretty much choosing your kind of theme for your outfit or your colors, mm -hmm. and then your, um, your character's race. So if they're a dragonborn, you're going to want to choose, like, I don't know, red skin or uh, whatever type Gold, of dragonborn. Gold, yeah, yeah, blue, no matter what, yeah, depending on what other kind of color your character is, you'll have that option. Yeah. Um, so in the current UI, um, we, we only have a couple of options here. This is just sort of a mock-up of like, okay, the system will work. This is how we're going to do it. Um, we have uh, currently a race and a theme tab um, where you'd be picking, say, like uh, if you were playing a, uh, a, a demon character, for example, you might pick, um, the, uh, uh, pick that race from the selection and have that kind of automatically get colored. And actually, you'll even, you should even be able to see the, uh, yeah, the eyes. The eyes, yeah. <laughs> Um, and it's sort of just a, a one-click sort of shop, stop. <laughs> Didn't make sense. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> uh, to getting your, your kind of character fleshed out. Um, of course, we all want to go into way more depth, in depth than mm -hmm. that. But we'll go through the, the fastest possible process first. Um, so here's some other examples. Uh, this is theme coloring everything other than your, the, than your character's race. Um, and we kind of did a hover over so you can just see like what it's going to look like before you commit to anything. Uh, you're making a really big change, so we wanted you to be able to preview it. Um, and uh, this, these are some sort of mock-ups that will get a lot more fleshed out. For example, they don't quite paint the variation on the pauldron that we'd want, but we do have plans to, to get really good results here. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we're actually bringing in a, like a very, an expert colorist to help curate and create these sets of colors. So awesome. Yeah. Even if you're, you've never painted anything, um, if you have no sense for color, we can get you some beautiful, beautiful starting points. Um, but of course, we're all into how customized can it get, um, how specific can we get after that. Um, so I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. Um, decal tab I'm going to kind of skip over. Um, Coming soon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, like, we're. We've got a lot, a lot of work to do there. Um, we didn't hit a single uh, uh, decal stretch goal until like the the Kickstarter kind of started off. We didn't have really plans to flesh that out too far until everything did really, really well. Um, we we're like, okay, no, wait, we're gonna we're gonna give this everything and we're gonna put a massive amount of options in there. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a lot to do on that one. But our general hope is users will get really to a result really fast. Um, We've got a little bit of a little customized button over here um, where we're like, okay, you've got somewhere quickly. You've picked a nice theme, some mm -hmm. really beautiful colors, but you want to adjust some of it really quickly. You want to change that green, for example. Ooh. And there's a little customizability in a similar way. Oh, I love that you, glass. Oh, yeah. It's just going to give you hover over it. You can just see it changing. And this hasn't been shown in the Kickstarter or anything. This is something this I added. This is an exclusive like, sneak peek. I added it like last week. <laughs> 
Because um, I was like, you know what? I want something that's like halfway in between choosing a theme. Yeah, and, and, and hand painting. Getting it, getting yeah. in there, getting into really all the details. This is so nice. Yeah. Yeah. It just puts all those options there. That way you can yeah quickly hover over and see. Oh, this matches with this, or oh, I like this actually better than the green. Yeah. Yeah. So really broad strokes. Just change the whole thing at the same time. Uh, make really, really big changes. Um, just kind of preview what it's going to look like. You'd have to commit to anything. Um, I think this will be great. I think this will... Um, we've still got some user testing to do, of course, but um, uh, pretty excited about this as a, uh, as a tool. Oh, speaking of the glass, uh, so one of the stretch goals was that uh, the addition of glass effects, does that mean that they are painted on, are they a painted on effect that makes it look like glass, or will you be able to shine light through it, like a like a clear resin. Uh, you are talking about some some highly magical experimental 3D printing tech right there. Um, in terms of being able to see through the miniature, we will talk about that a little later. Oh, uh, <laughs> the glass effects in the Kickstarter goal, though, um, as they're shown here, are uh, about how do we capture a material response into a, a painted mini essentially. And it's what professional painted miniature artists, professional miniature artists do as well, where they'll brush in some of the reflection for metal, or in this case for glass, add an underlighting. And actually you can see this, um, this gray glass sphere. Let's, uh, let's do a little experiment, experiment with that. Currently it's at like very low opacity. Mm -hmm. um, Ooh. You can see that, let's do this. There we go. Um, so what you can see is um, because glass refracts the environment around it, mm -hmm. it sort of flips the lighting upside down. And as you can see, uh, you kind of get that kind of glassy effect. Um, and now we can kind of capture that as a miniature painter might and then print it out in miniature form. So glass was on the stretch goals because we thought it was going to be a feature that was kind of a bit advanced. It was going to take a lot of um, shader development. Uh, and as soon as we hit it, we were like, okay, no, let's, let's implement this. It's going to be worth it. People are th just so excited about this. Um, mm -hmm. Really, uh, everything, every material should be represented. 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 <laughs> um, so we were really excited to add that. Um, and, and you can kind of see it like working where you've got top lighting which, uh, all the way to underlit. Uh, and a lo large portion of the R&D for this project was how do we take... How do we take all of this material response? And another good one is, is metal. Yeah. Um, like, how do we take that shininess there that uh, in the viewer currently is like moving around uh, as if there were real lights? How do we bake that down into something that can appear in your hand? Mm -hmm. And reproduce the miniature painting techniques to do it. All right. Um, do we have any more questions for chat? Mm. Oh, we do have a few. Boop, ba doop, ba doop, ba doop, boop, ba doop, boop. Will the system handle color blending slash transitions on its own, or uh, if it allows multiple color on a single part, i.e. the wings? Let me say that again. Will the system handle color blending slash transitions on its own if it allows multiple color on a single part? I think, yeah, we, we displayed that with the wings. I think um, I can get this working on the head. Let me see. Let's find out. Um, yes is the answer. Um, we can, uh, we'll allow for color blended transitions and you can see that in the uh, angel wings. We, with 3D printing, you can get really beautiful blends between some of the colors. I believe there is a setup already in for horns. Let's, um, like I was saying, there's still some debugging to do. Um, let's get rid of that. There we go. All right. Well, we're making our tiefling even better now, which is great. <laughs> um, I think this should work. Um, and I was wrong. Let's try one more. Um, we haven't quite set it up yet. Yeah, there's a lot of setup to do. Um, and horns was one of those things that we will be kind of just enabling a gradient by default. Um, so, oh, there we go. Perfect. There we go. Sweet. All right. Ooh. Ooh. All right. There we go. That's, there's That's some spooky. metallic tipped horns. <laughs> I um, dig it. So a lot of parts will just have a, a gradient on them by default, where it'll just you click up, click the top and click the bottom, and you can select different colors. Um, while other parts, for example, hair, 
will allow you to choose where that gradient is. So and you're going to get a little streak that's a different color or mm -hmm. multiple stripes or a braid of two different colors that twists back. There's all sorts of beautiful uh, options for that, which is cool. I'm glad I got that working. That's fun. <laughs> I've had way too much fun like mixing and matching different materials. Like, like horns that are metal tipped just shouldn't exist, but it's so easy to experiment with it and do it that you're like, why not? Let's, let's give it a shot. Um, All right, we have we have two questions that I'm going to kind of combine into one. Uh, essentially, people asking really specific requests like, uh, are we are there going to be more body types to, in order to make heavier characters, and uh, are there going to be any seated poses uh, in the future? Uh, seated poses are on our roadmap. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, as you might guess with like the interaction of skirts and everything that's going on down there, there's some complexity to them, but we, we have them on our radar, at least. I'm going to be giving that answer to a lot of things. Yeah. Um, like, we, we see all these user requests, we want all these things too. There's barely anything where we're like, ah, we'll never do that. Um, it's nearly always like, oh gosh, we need, we need more team members to make these things. Um, and we want to make all these things. <laughs> yes. We passionately and very, very much do. And sorry, what was the other part of the question? Uh, larger, like just, I guess, more body options in order to make a heavier setter characters. Mm, fair enough. Um, as you can guess, with body types that push past our current slider morphology, you're getting into territory where the kind of, um, the current clothing can't really like deform enough to, to compensate for it. So the, like, there's been a lot of discussion of like, how do we uh, get more extreme kind of characters that um, like how would we do an ogre fully mm -hmm. um, in a way that they're larger than anything we've currently got um, how would we do like an ogre that's kind of like hunched over and has all the, the like the expected sort of morphs that take it very very far away from this humanoid form uh, and we have some ideas um, and uh, we're certainly experimenting with them but those those kinds of characters represent a very very small percentage of the um, of characters that people play, unfortunately. Um, so the tech to um, tech to to one ratio isn't quite there yet, but um, we are we we want those things too. <laughs> well, this has been so much fun. I unfortunately have to get going. Yeah. I gotta go uh, a GM a game really quick uh, later on uh, on Hyper RPG. But this has been great. Uh, Y'all keep watching. We've got a lot more uh, Good luck to talk with about. The oh, thank you. It's the finale. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us, Emily. Well, uh, you can jump over to The Witcher later on Hyper RPG. Yeah, at in 6 like... p.m. <laughs> there we go. Join us. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to steal this seat if I have. Oh, hi, Nora. Yeah, Thanks for I'm joining back. us again. <laughs> Trevor, two loots is back. <laughs> two loots! I mean, two loots! <laughs> awesome. So I'm here to happy, happily help you co-pilot. Oh, brilliant. Excellent um, coloring Yeah, fun. you can keep a more of an eye on chat than I'll, I'll be able to. And uh, I did see sort of an interesting array of questions regarding yeah. shaders and which ones you can put on what objects of the character. Let's, let's dial into that. Let's yeah. do it. So we started with the how do you basically uh, paint something really fast. And now let's get really, really specific. Um, and we always, right from the start of color, we wanted to reproduce this, this thing that I found to be so satisfying, that miniature painters find to be so satisfying, is that slowly building something up piece by piece. How do you, how do you build this color scheme up little bit by little bit? And you see it take form before you, uh, and it, eventually it's like this whole, this whole piece. And you don't get that satisfaction from the, from clicking one button and having the whole thing painted. Yeah, agreed. You, you've also not been deliberate about it. It's just sort of who knows what you're going to get. So there's a there's an enjoyable process to be found. Um, keeping something like actually let's let's use this character. All right. But we're gonna we're gonna wipe everything. Uh, can we go back to dual screen? Cool. Starting um, fresh. We're gonna we're gonna wipe everything, um, all the color at least, and start fresh and go over to our paints tab. And this is like, we're just giving you a paintbrush. A paintbrush that is way easier to use than an actual paintbrush. Absolutely. <laughs> so much faster. Far more immediate. Um, Very gratifying. And you can pretty much paint any way you want there. And we have a cloth shader. 
selected right sure. now. Yeah, we won the we won the Hero Forge banner ad. Yes, representation <laughs> Hero Forge. Um, that's the that's the default paint that comes up, um, and we kind of want you to be able to color anything the color you want it to be. Absolutely. If you could paint a mini like that in a way that, was, that you'd want, we want you to be able to do that really fast too. Um, you'll notice that some of these like all color at the same time. That's because we're still working on like kind of a pass where these are all nicely separated. But uh, that's going to be the general idea is that you can you can build it up piece by piece, change the materials. And it's got to be so fun to be able to just sit there and work through your own color scheme bit by bit, trim by trim, if you really want to get in the weeds with it and get really subtle. Like let's say you have a rogue, right? And you have all these dark colors. Um, you probably want to bring some subtlety into that too, I'd imagine. Some, some black, but maybe some dark brown, some dark purple, and really getting into the finer, the trim and the buckles and the cloth. I've already lost track of what's happening, so I got, <laughs> I got very distracted. I was like, I am painting this miniature now. <laughs> uh, we found that with the, the team, as soon as we got the first prototypes of this working and we kind of sent them out, and we're like, hey, everybody, we need, we need to make some minis. There's a bunch mm -hmm. of miniatures that are all 3D printed here. Um, we need to all make some miniatures. Uh, and as soon as we got this into the team's hand, hands, the entire office just like, like disappeared from their regular work and just spent the entire day making stuff in color because like, oh, this is too fun, I couldn't stop. It's so fun <laughs> and it's so fast. So that's what's nice about it is you get, you get to mock it up so quickly and you're yeah. like, oh, that's gratifying. Yeah, you just get to just see it take form before your eyes. Uh, so you'll see up here a bunch of different sort of materials. And we really wanted this to just be visually like very obvious what's going on. Um, our, our initial plans could have easily been flat colors on stuff. Mm -hmm. And then you just pick the color and you put the color on it. But because miniature painters, good miniature painters capture so much material response, we're like, wow, this is, this is getting rich and complicated already. So we, we made this shadable system. Mm -hmm. Like the, there was real art that had to be out, kind of made to to represent what it is. So you can go to the plastic and you'll see these D20s <laughs> uh, for the plastic. Let's, let's, let's do that down there. Um, and they all have the, the lighting effects that you'd want from that material. Well, like for bone, you've got a nice dry look to that. With some, some darkness in the There's some different ones there. We got some crumbling got brown bone, you know, there's a lot. Like, and they should all like kind of behave like you'd expect. Um, we got a good library of these. Some of those metals are so fun. Yeah. What was my favorite? Let's showcase some of these. Uh, like I think I really like Lost, Lost City of Brass because it's got like the copper tarnish. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Like and, um, I bet we want to bring up a bit about how much users can start looking into where they can take shaders like this too. Like, you know, what if you really like that one shader that you just brought up, but you're like, oh, I wish it wasn't tilting towards green on the edges. You want to get more specific? I want more specific. You want more control? We've given you I, all the paint. Are you kidding me? <laughs> the most <laughs> amount of control possible. If I want to spend three days on this character, show me Gosh. how. Well, first, just to answer a question in chat relevant, uh, yes, you can put any shader on anything. I think the only limitations is the eye shader only works for eyes. I'm going to I'm going to do something wild here. There we go. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> just in just in case you need to get a little uh um hex hexachromia, what's the term for it? Ooh. Oh, there's a good word chat. for it. Yeah, chat, you know the Where's word chat? for two different eyes. I don't know what the word for one demon eye and one human eye is, though. It's probably no <laughs> word for that. Is there a word for that? Because we need to know. <laughs> we do. It's really <laughs> quite important for us. <laughs> um but to your original question there. Mm -hmm. uh, getting even more in depth. There we go. Heterochromia. Heterochromia. OK, there that's we pretty go. close. That Thank makes you, much Chad. more sense. Um, so just in case you want to get a little heterochromia. Yeah. Uh, we, we kind of knew from original Hero Forge, mm -hmm. from like 1.0, that there was no end amount of creativity that a user is going to want to express. Very true. Like there, there really isn't a like, oh, no, that's, that's giving too much power. So we were much more equipped for the color system, I think, than 1.0 Hero Forge in that like, we, just, we knew you're going to want to dial it in, um, even though it's a complex system. So let's, let's, yeah. let's dial it let's, in. Let's go another level down. Yeah. 
So once you've painted a miniature, you get this, uh, basically the, 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 the mix tab. We're finding a name for it. Who knows what it's going to be called? <laughs> um, and you're going to just see what is on your miniature. So right now we have the city of brass, lost city of brass. Great name. Like paint. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, well, I, I missed my, my tips for my ones, so we're going <laughs> to put that right back there. Um, so you can decide where on your character your current paints go, but pay probably most, most juicily, uh, you, you can start editing those paints. Um, so let's, let's take that brass. You're saying, okay, maybe the brass tarnish is a little bit too much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's try that one. Um, but get, let's dial in even further. Here you can see the tarnish layer, which is the highlight. Let's, let's, let's dial that back. Maybe we want it to be kind of more of like a sort of a white, like sort of shine. Maybe we want it yeah. to be more like chipped metal. Like it's, like it's very, uh, like it's been buffed, the color's been buffed away, or you yeah, know, yeah. So let's let's get edges. really in depth. Let's get let's make sure that it's really shiny. That edge, there mm. we go. Um, let's maybe like um, da like make sure that our metal kind of contrasts nicely with that. There we go. All right, so it's like being chipped and buffed. Yeah, that's a lot of wear and tear. Popping out. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of use there. A lot of use. Uh, what I just did, just to kind of walk walk you through the UI there. Um, we didn't want to present you with a million options at first because uh, it is a complex shader system behind the scenes. Yeah. Um, so what what does it mean to just say, okay, you've got a red cloth, you want to very quickly change the color of that. Great, that's all you need to do. That was what we wanted. We wanted you to be, at least be able to slide that color around and get good results. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, I mean, it's here, it's here or forward at this point. We're gonna go. We're gonna go more in depth. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Um, and you'll see these little advanced, as soon as I put it into the advanced territory. Uh, and now this might crash. <gasps> oh, you predicted that. I did. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know, I'm like, oh, like, what? Like, like it's like like a good thing. Like, yeah. <laughs> um, well, that does happen that, when creating a very, very deep paint system. <laughs> uh, these, the shader system behind the scenes is really really complex and yes. you can dial deep deep into it um, creating the like the highlights and the low lights mm -hmm. and the gradient transitions before them uh, and on, on all these different patches of your miniature as well the specularity yeah. coming through you can really decide how shiny you want these things to be oh we're back up <laughs> <laughs> there we go all right um, let's uh, let's let's get back there let's get weird with the material that sounds let's, great let's put our glass back on and get weird. So, um, actually, the glass was going to be a bad choice. Let's do it on the book as well. Why not? Um, why? <laughs> because it, you can. Yeah, you, right? Right, you, you can. It, admittedly, it hurts. It hurts me. I come from a background of uh, shader uh, responses in games having to look really, really good. Like right. uh, back when I was at Naughty Dog, Uncharted was all about this beautiful, beautiful world that was completely believably beautifully rendered. Mm -hmm. And the idea that you could put a glass shader on something that's not glass, mm -hmm. it's just like, ah, no, it just looks wrong. Something's very wrong about that. <laughs> but uh, some of the wild wonder of the, the UI is being able to do that. Absolutely. <laughs> and you're right, was it specular? Yeah, which we call roughness, where mm -hmm. you can, oh, you know what, let's, let's do this. There we go. Where you're like, okay, and the best example of this thing is that ball over here. And we'll actually, we'll make, the material a little darker just so you can see this. Uh, you can see it going all the way from highly reflective with with a lot of spec to rougher and rougher and rougher. And we might be like, we're in a kind of territory where it's simulating like really rough leather or, mm -hmm. or cloth or like wool or something at that point. Um, and the roughness is probably great to be able to bring out ideas like ice and um, glasses you mentioned and yeah. just all your creative ideas a lot of weird materials we realized like wait okay we also have to make magic work <laughs> yes <laughs> the, the spell effect so we can't we can't constrain you by the rules of reality <laughs> we can't <laughs> or, or there will be no constraints there yeah yeah uh, and that's just one of them uh, fuzz is like for more for cloth let's do that on this this green cloth actually um where most of these actually get baked down. This is actually one that we can't quite bake down yet. We mm -hmm. haven't found a good way to do where the edges end up kind of lighter. Mm -hmm. There's a phenomenon that happens. We're going to get real technical with shaders here. There's a phenomenon that happens with clothing where if it's kind of woolly or has a lot of depth to it, when you're looking directly into it, you're looking at all the, the cr cracks between the cloth. 
between the threads and you're seeing the darkness. But at an angle, you're seeing um, only the top of the threads. So you don't see into the darkness. Mm -hmm. um, similar hap effect happens with like moss or like a shag rug. Look at it at an angle, it'll be lighter than if you look directly down into it. So that's simulating that. Gosh, that got in depth really fast. Oh, that was fa fascinating though. That's good. That's a, <laughs> that's, it's a fun way to understand how this is all created, right? You, you're doing a lot of legwork of thinking through okay, how does this need to be represented so people have these options? That's fair. Um, massive shout out to the the dev team yeah. that like, made this possible. Um, uh, especially Adam uh, Garman about the shaders. Um, uh, one of our other devs who isn't in the office. Um, they work from, from England. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, developing these shaders that represent physical things but then taking it all the way to a point that you can take that physical thing and actually paint a mini like it automatically, like for us to capture that material response is, has been just a, a journey. It's, it's such a cool thing to be able to do on top of being able to color a mini to capture material responses so well. Yeah. Uh, and the opacity was just one of those. I, I think I showed you that earlier where it kind of inverts the, uh, inverts the lighting as if things are being refracted. Mm -hmm. um, what else have we got? We got metal. Uh, <laughs> the, I, I come from a, a background of these very like tightly controlled, physically based uh, shader pipelines. So um, once upon a time, metal was, and you'll see it, was a bunch of sliders. You can you can change things like any amount of metal you want. You can be no metal or full metal or half metal. <laughs> uh, and now in reality, surfaces actually are very rarely both. Mm. It turns out it's very like, is it a, a metal response or is it not? Unless you've got like dirt over metal. And we're like, okay, some people are going to want to put dirt over metal. So mm -hmm. what are we going to have to accommodate for it? Yep. Um, but by default, we're like, okay, we don't want people to get too astray. So it's just, is it metal or is it not? Is the default. Try to make it easy at first. And if you really want to dial in. The, the layers can be had. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, similar with skin, uh, we wanted to keep it simple, but um, skin can get a lot more complicated, um, and so can glow. Glow's um, an interesting. Oh, we one. should talk about glow. We, we should talk about yeah. glow. Oh Put my some goodness! Effects on there. Let's do it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Excellent. Fun ones. Let's go back to paints because we've got some good starting points. And we realized that like that idea that something is emanating light is going to be pretty important to capture into into the mini. So we we added a, a glow slider to things. Let's just put a few starting. Oh, cool. We can change that one. We set this one up. Sweet. Mm -hmm. It's going to have some freaking cool purple skulls things. Yes. <laughs> I got a little too excited about that. Oh, I'm not excited enough. I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of gross. <laughs> I'm a little grossed out by that. <laughs> it's a little icky. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then, and then let's dial that in though. Um, let's just use this. This is an example. A gross boy here. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and glow kind of like takes away a lot of the the lighting and ends up giving it its own sort of lighting. Mm -hmm. But of course, you're going to need to make it glow a different color than necessarily it is. Mm -hmm. So we can dial that in. Awesome. Uh, dial it in real hard. So let's just make the, the low lights, um, just the, the cracks. Let's have kind of like a weird, like reddish glow to it, maybe? Yeah. So now it's like. There we know, go. No, pinkish, I think, looks great. That stands out. <laughs> that, is, that is a very unique That's magic. Effect. Yeah. <laughs> and that's magic. Yeah, that's magic. <laughs> that's how you make magic. Uh, so that's, that's an exciting one. We realize that people are going to need. Oh, wait, I can also do this. Oh, yeah. You can also glow the eyes. Yes. Just, just in case yes, you, you need to like, um, <laughs> uh, we realized with, with eye, eyes was such a, an interesting challenge because we mm -hmm. knew we needed to physically represent an eye really well. Like uh, we have a special shader just written to it. The like it, it um, simulates the cornea and the iris mm -hmm. and the way light refracts through the eye. But at the same time, you just needed to be able to stick some weird glowing glass on there as well. <laughs> you had to be able to do that. Yeah, you just have to. It has to be an option. <laughs> um, so like the, the system we ended up with was, OK, you can just paint anything you like on the eyes. Uh, but the eye shader itself is it's very specific to the eye. So it'll kind of automatically apply um, if you click it. So you're saying I could have metallic eyeballs. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's fair. It's a, yeah. It's a thought. Yeah. It's a thought. 
<laughs> Show you a few different eyes. We, we're still working on this. There's a lot of fleshing out to do. We need kind of all these bizarre shapes of eyes in nature. We looked through mm -hmm. like, like what's out there? Mm -hmm. They're weird. <laughs> <laughs> what's what's the weirdest one you've seen so far then? I'm um, just like squid eyes have like a like a like a smiley face in them. Oh no. I haven't <laughs> seen this yet and I'm not sure I it's, ever want it's to. It's weird, they're very weird. <laughs> I see goat goat eyes being mentioned. Do we have goat? We don't have goat yet. Not yet. We will though. That the, is a known the, one. Those are the ones that I think are like square, I think. Um But we have we have the feline eyes right now. Oh bobone eyes are, as well. They're, those are weird ones where mm. they're like a feel like we should here's the next point in which it might crash we should make a big change let's let's find our minotaur race it worked sweet okay now we've got the appropriate eyes for the hey cow <laughs> what up what up <laughs> <laughs> this just looks shrugging this is kind of we got the i think the um one of the sliders we on, have the, the posture yeah. slider cranked on this one <laughs> awesome um so there's been lots of fun. Um, we had to kind of revamp the whole underlying system for eyes because mm -hmm. back four or five years ago, none of these races like had their own eyeballs. Yeah, it was just built right into the into the. There was not a the full expectation of being at this point. Yeah. I'd imagine <laughs> this, this, where we're picking out feline eyes, literally the eyeballs, bird eyeballs. This is a journey. <laughs> That's and then sure. what these eyeballs can be on different characters and different animal types. Yeah. That's that's fun too. Uh, uh right. Um we should probably just like just reel it in with a few basic fire acts too. Like we've shown some yeah. really, really weird um weird stuff, but we've got we've got some more basic ones there as well. So let's let's not forget you can you can get your fire effects. There's a lot of fire magic out there. There's a lot. Yeah. It's good magic. It's it is. It's it's the stuff <laughs> wizards are made out of. <laughs> what would they be without their fire magic? Exactly. Um, and like I was saying, we kind of we kind of want to give you good like defaults. Um, these aren't all fully refined. Um, I think yeah, we've sort but, of built these to quickly work around. You know, work through the the system. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one of our uh, kind of holy grails of this that I'll talk about. This is. This is cheeky because we haven't put it on the stretch goal list yet, but it's. I'm going to talk about oh, it. Oh gosh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, we we want to get there. It's it's a very challenging concept, and that is uh, object source lighting on a miniature. So actually having this fire glow emanate onto the character itself. And that means hitting the armor, or if there's skin showing, yeah. having the blue of that magic bounce off the arm. So much so, even the reflection in the metal. <laughs> that's a good one. So that's, that's a the, good one. That's the holy grail. Um, it, it's a huge undertaking in terms of the rendering complexity. Um, so it will be like kind of one of our, our last stretch goals. We hope we get to that point. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the, the amount of support we've seen so far makes us think, yeah. Um, but like, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> we were really hoping to hit something like that. That's, that's, you know, when you look at painted figurines and you see, you know, the hand painted ones, and that's a pretty easy thing to be able to do, I'd imagine. You know, I'm not painting well, mini, so I'm it, saying this It's definitely challenging, but it, it's it's a lot less technologically challenging to make yes. it uh, hand-painted like that. That's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's the correct way to that's say fair. it. That's fair. So that's, that's a lot to consider in 3D. Yeah, it's. I, I love these challenges. Though. They're, re they're really, really juicy. They're really difficult, but the results can be just amazing, I think. Visually just so good, so and, good. And this riffs off a question we had earlier, which was, can we visualize this in different lighting environments? And I think adding the object source lighting, which will be a stretch goal, if we get that, the answer will kind of be yes in that we'll have to be able to. There might be a mode in which you want that fire or that lantern mm -hmm. to be the sort of main source of color, and we can change the lighting so all your other colors will dull and the lantern will take priority and you'll get this beautifully well-rendered uh, lighting effect. So, Sounds beautiful. Yeah. Sounds epic and beautiful yeah 
Absolutely. Oh, we are way we are way over time. I oh. mean, like we're gonna just keep going as long as people have questions. But like we were like, oh, it'll be an hour. <laughs> nope, not at all. There's there's a lot to show here. Not there's a lot to slightly. talk about. There's a lot going on here. I think it would be fair to say. Let's uh, let's let's bring Chris on, who's uh, who's been manning the stream. So thank you, Chris, for. Um, switching oh. our scenes back and forward. And okay, it's been bugging me. You've got fire on there, but you're not doing glow on the fire. Fair enough. I like should make it glow more. You know what? We, we can do that. It, we, we The presets maybe just didn't have enough glow. Um, it looks like that might just be bugged out. So now there, it looks there we like go. fire. All right. oh, okay. You know what? <laughs> that was... Thank you. <laughs> what do we do about you? <laughs> what an entrance. <laughs> I, it's in there sitting on my hand. I think what happened is our, our presets broke. Um, so uh, without the, the glow, so we'll have to add that back. And like I was saying, all very work in progress, but good call. <laughs> I do the uh, a lot of imagery with the using this interface for, for the Kickstarter. So I've been playing with this color U UI for, for months and it's just, it's so much fun. So yeah, when I see fire, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, okay, now I'll go swipe up the glow. Yeah, and so to sit off screen and just sit on my hands was a little irritating. Uh, you've worked on a large amount of the assets, the imagery for the Kickstarter. Yeah, we had a lot of images to pull together, but I think it turned out great. And um, it looks cool. So that's that's one of the things I do for the stretch goals and for and the, many many other things with, with Hero Forge. Uh, probably most interesting to chat is your uh, your dioramas for our social media posts. I I do a lot of the I do the photography. Um, so like if you saw the adventure calendar uh, back in December, all of those photos I shot all of those. So one of the privileges of that is I also get to see the release schedule kind of in advance. So uh, that's something to bring up too, is I definitely have my, my work cut out for me and taking photos in the future. So if you were worried about this Kickstarter at all affecting the releases, you shouldn't be because, oh my God, the photos I'm gonna have to take, it's turned mm -hmm. to 11, it's not going Less, it's definitely going more on releases in the coming year. So There's some really, really good stuff. That's works. completely separate from color. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Um, those those dioramas, they're they're really beautiful. Oh, like thank you. we we love seeing them in house as well. Generally, we haven't seen like we we take those photographs. You take them in like the studio in one of the rooms in the in the studio, and set up these tiny little dioramas with backgrounds and and all the pieces that just complete a scene. And we don't get to see those until our social media posts a lot of the time. I mean, the, some people do, but like quite often we'll be like, oh, we want to see the, the Treasure Tuesday release just to see the... And people get excited about it in the office too. And that, that makes me feel good. And it's kind of funny because, you know, I started here and, and it was we were trying to ramp up that stuff. And it was maybe my first week of work. And I was just setting stuff up on a pizza box. And Margaret came in and got all excited because look at what Chris is doing just to make this diorama. And since then, I mean, I've got, I've, I've bought motors and stuff and tablets and whatnot to just step it up. We really want the minis to you to see them as cool as they really are. Um, and yeah, totally. So that's part of my job. It's, it's beautiful to see. And there are, uh, there's a whole culture, uh, there's a whole social media, whatnot, just um, devoted to miniature photography. And so I can also do some shout out to Tangible Day and some other guys that are, that are out there who have been um, developing the craft and also making, you know, uh, some interactions with me cool. too. Cool. Um, a few questions from chat um, uh, were asked, uh, will Hero Forge be using the additional Kickstarter funds to hire more employees? And definitely, we're so excited to grow the team and start meeting the demands that everybody, like all the, the amazing things that people want. And then they had another question, which was uh, computer specs to use color. That's an interesting one. <laughs> uh, we. We're pretty confident that we can make it work on anything that currently runs Hero Forge. That said, if you're running a phone that's five years old and like, it's a little, like we might have to make some sacrifices in the visual rendering quality to make it work on your device. <laughs> um, so we'll, we'll do everything we can to make it work. Um, but 
uh, we, we will, similar to what we currently do with our rendering quality, be kind of downing the quality if your device can't handle it. Basically, we're going to try to fully take advantage of everything. This scene right now has like uh, ambient occlusion that's uh, calculated in real time and uh, full material responses and thousands of different patches and very, very complex shaders. Um, and not all of that is going to work, but by like in a basic way, yes, you will be able to get color. What other questions do we have? We have the question: Can you resize things like horns and clothing on the on the figure? And I and I like this question. You can already do the horns. I know because that was a social. That was one of our Treasure Tuesday releases like a week or two ago. Um, Very recent addition. You yeah. can now resize horns. We did it separately. You can have a big one and a small <laughs> one. You can congratulations, yeah. Dice Wizard. You Your can dreams rotate have come true already. them. <laughs> you can have multiple horns. Um, yeah, yeah. And that's that that takes rigging. There's a lot involved, and that's a really good segue. What up, Bev? Hey! Thanks for hanging out back there, yeah. and thanks for joining us. Thank you, Chris. Nice. That was, that was a good explosion. I heard it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Bev, what do you what do you do for with Hero Forge? Uh, I'm the character technical director, and I'm I heard you guys talking about some of my work that I do earlier. Yeah. Um, I am the person who's in charge of the body morphology and then uh, like when we do something like the elephant head trying to get the eye patch to work on him I'm the one who like has to go through and like make up what was it I had to make a new helm system so that it could push up above the nose squash down to sit on the head and then turn something that was a circle into a square we to get have it. to make eye <laughs> like, patches work for elephants let's just Let's just take a moment to appreciate that that is a thing that has to be solved. Elephants need, know, to, need their eye patches. <laughs> like, you, you gotta be able to make a pirate elephant. <laughs> yeah, like I, uh, yeah, and and because I mean, like when you're oh. when you're working on it, you start it, and you're like, do I really have to make an eye patch for an elephant? And then you're like, well, I really just should. I should just in case, because you know somebody's gonna want that. You know, someone somewhere is gonna want that. So. So you work on it until until that's done, <laughs> you know. And we are also constantly refining the the quality of what's out there already, like the yeah. interactions. Yeah, yeah, like stuff. like we had to come up with the whole new system for for hats, which meant how many hats do we have? Like it was like a couple hundred. Like Probably. we had to like we're, we're there's still a couple <laughs> that we are re reworking to make them work a, like a little nicer. Um, yeah, because now because uh, the kobolds that came out have no forehead, so then there had to be another thing in there to get that to like to get the helms to come over and bend out the nose properly because it's the highest the highest nose shortest forehead character we've ever done. Um, the crux of Hero Forge is everything <laughs> has to work with everything as yeah. best we can. Sometimes yeah. things are impractical. Cthulhu characters, the um, so the Octofolk won't oh. be able to have beards. <laughs> There's nowhere to put the beard. We tried. Yeah, yeah. That was... <laughs> but, but generally, yeah, generally, yeah, we try really, really hard to not have to turn, to not have to turn things off, or if, um, if we have to, like, like when we, uh, like, what, five years ago when we were like, oh, we have to have a lizard leg, and it has to have, the knee has to go this other direction. Uh, we were like, well, how do we? We can't just make new pants for all of that so then we had to come up with this alternate system of of knee pants for everything to get that to work there's an entirely new pair of pants for every pair of pants for, yeah, for the digigrade <laughs> yeah for the digigrade legs yeah before i forget um thank you uh, zaraze and the other hero forgers in chat for helping moderate things um very much appreciate you jumping in um zaraze uh, is one of our technical artists, um, and also has some moderation experience, so thanks for jumping. <laughs> no beards on Octofolk, I'm canceling my pledge. Oh, no! Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> I tried so hard. Um, um, there's a real possibility one day we're like, okay, maybe mustaches. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can we switch to the dual view? And, and we'll just, I want to just visualize that in my head for a second. Yeah, well, I mean, it would go, it would go like you'd you'd wear it like here <laughs> on his nose because it's the only place left. Yeah, it's yeah. That's that's one. Yeah, like, and even if we can't make something work, we're always trying to make it work. 
eventually like um yeah like like that like like if eventually if we come up with a place and a way to do it that we hadn't thought of before it'll go in because like eye patches you know why why not let someone do that we decided like a long time ago that we would let people be as weird as they wanted yeah yeah um can we pose the tentacles on the octofolk Oh, that's one of the U implementation things. And I would go, yes, <laughs> yes, you can. Uh, that's why they are like a little, I mean, I know we've talked about printability before. Uh, like they're, they're pretty thick tentacles. Um, and it is to make sure that, uh, uh, that the user could position them, but not make them so, so thin that they would become a breakab breakability issue. That's a lot of joints. It's a yeah. lot of tentacle. Wow. Yeah, each tentacle has something like 15 joints in it or something like that. So you can really get in there and squirrel it around. And um, and then there is a system for holding things with the tentacles that we that right, I yeah. spent a long time a on. So if we're just showing off things that we weren't going to talk about. What's, your, what's, what's, <laughs> the, what's the favorite thing to hold? For the octo folk. Okay, so I have a favorite thing to hold for everything, and it's the broken bottle. <laughs> um, if a tail holds something, or the elephant holds something, or or this guy holds it, it's always like oh, like he's gonna he's been in a bar fight, and he's gonna <laughs> like they're all bar fight creatures for me. That is good. That's a good choice. That it just immediately adds so much character and backstory. Oh, but you should click on the brain there because someone has asked for it a couple times already. Mm -hmm. So I forget That's who asked for this, thing. but I saw you earlier and and you said it had to have a brain. But then, so if you get that and then you're like, well, he needs to present it, you could get it all, all the tentacles down there picking it up. That's true, yeah. You'd if you tried it. Post it you could do yeah, it all wrapping around or whatever you yeah, want. Yeah, whatever you want, but um, I'm not gonna do it because it's tiring. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so. Uh, so uh, I just wanted to bring up that my favorite idea for a Kickstarter um, stretch goal was axed. So I need you all. This is a solemn so, like, moment, everybody. <laughs> like, okay, so it's called Octopus Everything. And I wanted, I want octopuses on the shoulders. I want an octopus hat. I want an octopus on the ground as a familiar, possibly pile of octopuses or uh, octoplops. Uh, anyway, if you guys want this and need this, I said, you know, I said shoulder, shoulder octopuses. Don't you already have a shoulder octopus? Oh, I do have a shoulder octopus. <laughs> like, I do. There we go. Octopus everything. So if you want octopus everything, you should start putting it in on the request forms and writing in so that we can octopus everything. A, a weird thing happened, Beth. Like, we're seeing, we're seeing, like, so many requests for octopi right now that we just kind of have to put that right at the top of the list, I guess. Uh, I guess octopi all the way down. Yeah, layers. Yeah. I've layers been five of years trying to get octopuses in this in in our system. And now, I, now I feel like we just sort of have to. <laughs> one day, one day at least, <laughs> at least one octopus. One day. I mean, yeah. we we've sort of half got that. This didn't quite do it for you, did it? It's it's close. It's, it's on its way. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, well, thank you so much for joining us, Val. Well, thank you guys for listening. Octopus everything. Never stop following your dreams. <laughs> Um, octopus arms, that's fair. Octopus fingers, that's fair. It turns out that it's, it's keep, keep going. It's a lot of octopus stuff. <laughs> octopus teeth. <laughs> Thanks, I hate octopus teeth, says Devin Sio. <laughs> what up, Dustin? Hey, How's it going? What's going on? Look at this, just a, this is a menagerie of different hero forges coming by to say hi. All of our forgers, all in the same so place. So many forgers. <laughs> all of our best forgers. <laughs> We've scoured the land. We've accumulated them here in Santa Monica. <laughs> <laughs> and across the world. Yeah, across the world too. Oh my gosh, Adam, what would we do without him? Right. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and Michelle uh, developed a large portion of the, the color UI. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and one of our founders is all the way in Maine. Oh yeah, no, yeah, Lene, he's he's great. He does he does a lot of our release stuff. He he's constructed the guts of our website. Uh, everything that everything, all the data that moves around is uh, a, a large part thanks to Lene. And let's like let's not forget just have, there's there's a million people to shout out for. Oh, like, I know, right? Like, we have uh, artists we work with around the world who produce amazing work. That we have a 13 person team in office. It's really we're very small um, compared. 
amount of stuff we do. We put out new content every single week on Tuesdays. So like yeah, it's it yeah it takes a it takes an army right it does it takes an army <laughs> surrounding the the small team in house <laughs> exactly and, yeah. and 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 we have a manufacturer we have shipping partners there's just there's just so much stuff that goes into like making these things we have a lot of people to thank so you're Dustin I am Dustin hi <laughs> we can talk about them or we can talk about me let's talk about you for a second <laughs> hi um, I'm Dustin I work on uh, full stack mostly back end stuff. Um, the kind of stuff that I work on is, uh, uh, y'all met Donna earlier. She's our customer support person. Whenever she has a problem uh, with the website not working or something, I'm the first person she typically turns to. Um, I also work on, uh, I helped work on the cart a little bit with Post. Um, I've worked on the accounts pages. Uh, this, I've helped a little bit with store credit, order processing. I'm kind of all over the place. Uh, any anything that uh, people in the front end kind of need to get things to you, I kind of help them make that happen. So much streamlining of the process surrounding getting a custom miniature. Exactly. Which which took a lot of streamlining just because people are so passionate about their miniatures. They'll they'll be like, oh no, I want to change a thing I've just ordered. That's that's a oh, oh gosh. Yeah, a thing that we get a lot for sure. You can you can now go cancel your. Yeah your miniature and order it again in the perfect way you want it. Like, if you change your mind uh, within a small window, uh, we really do, like, legitimately um, manufacture it just for you. So there is a point of no return, that's for sure. But, yeah, absolutely. Um, there's a lot of streamlining that we that you've, you've had a big part in. Yeah, we've all been there with buyer's remorse, so. Yeah, <laughs> we, yeah, uh, and, and, and like you said, now we have, like, a 24-hour window. If you don't like your mini that you just bought, and you're like, oh my gosh, wait, I forgot. He has a rat familiar that hangs out with him on, on on the floor, and he like loves hanging on to burgers in his hand. Like, yeah, we can make that happen. We have about twenty four hours to get that out to us, and sometimes we can cancel it after that. But just to play it safe, uh, we that's the window that we can kind of provide for y'all for sure. Yeah, yeah. Are you excited to be playing with color miniatures? Oh, absolutely. Oh my gosh, I'm so stoked. I can't believe how well these have turned out. These are so cool. We keep saying that, don't we? Like, I know. It's, I, we sound like broken records, but, but it's it's really the but case. But it, it comes from a place of being excited, not just for what we're making, but just to, to play games with them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, and we've played D&D &D before, and my miniatures were always lacking. You can tell me they were, weren't they? <laughs> I, this is this is my favorite place to answer this question. I mean, a little bit. I don't know. They weren't. We didn't really have painted minis for sure, and they're fine. You know, uh, having gray minis on. on By we didn't really have way. painted minis for sure. Dustin's referring to the two miniatures I tried to paint out of maybe like ten or so that I had for one of my campaigns, and they were just like half painted because I, I got far enough that I couldn't quite get further. Oh man. Um, I was not going to eviscerate you, but I'm glad you did that for me. <laughs> no, well, you were fine. We, we had a great time. We had a solution, too. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we were like, oh, wait, we, we really want to be playing with a full-color tabletop? If only there was something we could do if we, like, knew someone who worked at Hero Forge or something. Ah. <laughs> right? Um, we, we, should, we should show off a few of these miniatures. Oh, absolutely. Let's, let's do a little, uh, a little camera zoom. Now, a stream like this is never going to be the best place to, like, see close-ups of these miniatures. Um, we've posted some... Uh, the Kickstarter demos them a lot, uh, but like just seeing seeing them in hands, seeing them in in real life, uh, is, uh, is is nice too. So let's let's find some of our favorite ones. Oh um, man, there's so many. I'm gonna definitely, I'm gonna definitely pick the um, just because we were talking earlier about like the different kind of color schemes and um, oh, like different color schemes mm. and the ability to paint the same miniature in really really different ways. Um, super, super psyched um, for that. Um, I love this angel just because we, we put so much love into like, well, what, what does Hero Forge 2.0 kind of look like? Um, but there's a lot of really interesting characters here. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, and the, and the, and the, the it actually captures so much stuff, the gradients and the, the, the familiar and the epic bases. I think this monk might be one of my favorites. Um, just, I, it's much simpler than everything else. I w wasn't expecting to love it so much, but the flesh tones like worked really well to a point that it sort of has more life to it than most hand-painted miniatures even. Um, mm -hmm. and we actually, some of these in this box are hand-painted and we can we can do a little comparison. Oh yeah, that'd be really good. Um, the best hand-painted miniatures are, are definitely a, a step up from the 3D printed ones, but they, um, 
They're obviously just a lot, a lot more expensive. You can back for hand painted miniatures on the Kickstarter right now. We don't know if we're going to be offering that past the Kickstarter. We don't think we're going to, it's going to like going to be a general option for people, just because there's so much manual work involved. Um, what you can paint in maybe ten minutes, beautifully in the character creator, takes a whole day plus of, of work. Um, well, don't quote me on that. I'm not exactly sure. It's, it's, it's a lot. I, I used to paint a lot of miniatures and I would certainly take uh, many days. Um, and the the quality we're going to try to get these hand-painted to is, re is really, really high. Um, but they're very, very, like... like they're, they're both great tokens um, for, for playing with. Um, I'm just going to look really closely. You guys don't get to look as closely as I am. Ooh, yeah, Don't worry, we're working on allowing y'all to look at these as closely as you want. <laughs> um, yeah, I, lo I love all these characters. No, they're all so pretty. One of the most one of the most fun things when it comes to working at Hero Forge is being able to provide like minis for for friends for their like campaigns and like it's been, that's been really yeah cool. we get a, yeah we get a lot of like rejects and like prints in house prototypical prints. Um, we we have friends come by and we will sometimes be like, hey, here's yeah. here's here's, here's a, a little, little mini home. box. Yeah, find one. It'll be fun. <laughs> yeah, go yeah, go have your NPCs. Go make a character based on this mini, which I think is actually a very neat concept. The number of times that happens is surprising. Um, we'll we'll get very inspired by the minis that people post, and we're like, you know what? This is gonna be my next NPC or my next my next main character. Yeah, um, which is a real fun process. Yes, exactly. There's yeah, it can be very inspiring just seeing other people's characters which is why um we we actually have you know facebook groups online for people to like show off their mini so they can inspire each other and show and i think that with the launch of color it's going to be very exciting for oh, people gosh. to be able to show each other what they can produce with color join the hero forge creators guild on facebook if you're not already part of it um it is where the the most amazing creations get posted it's super inspiring uh post your own please we love we love seeing them um and generally you'll find me kind of around the, and a lot of us actually around the yeah. hero forge creator guild trying to interact with like talking to people about like what what we're making um most of the earliest like leaks come from me on <laughs> because I just can't help saying a thing. Oh yeah, we love yeah we love seeing Tegan's name <laughs> floating around on the internet from things that he said. And people are like, look, here's what Tegan said, and we're like, oh man, Tegan said what? <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, please catch us. I'm gonna be posting in the group soon. I I want to show off some of the uh, the a color mini that I've made, and I want to be able to show y'all. And I'm excited to see what y'all can produce. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no, do it. absolutely. Uh, go, go post it. I'll go post it right now. All right. Well, thanks for joining us, Dustin. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for having me. Uh, and Zaraze, if you want to come in and just say hi at some point, you're welcome to. You don't have to stay in the other room moderating our chat. But Lindsay, what up? Hey. Thank you so much for joining us. No problem. Like you, you have you have jumped in right in the middle of all I of this. I have. You? I have the best job ever. <laughs> <laughs> you get to like you get to like choose and pre-color everything before users get to it. Right, yeah. I, I like to think that I use all of the skills I've ever learned, and so this one is goes way back to like kindergarten and trying to color and stay inside the lines. So I get to take uh, a lot of the old, uh, all the legacy models and start to help color in maps and try to just imagine uh, what areas people might want to color and make different. It is a daunting task to look at like thousands and thousands and thousands of pre-existing yes. options and be like we got it we got to add color to all of this yes and and i'm going a little color crazy to be fair um so and i uh i recently recently learned how to do uh the gradients so they're starting to show up more and more gradients are being added a yeah. few other places besides just the horns we'll see we'll see where they where they land <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's it's going to be a journey, isn't it? Like just to yeah. provide color. Um, luckily, we managed to automate some of it. Like mm -hmm. there's some tech behind the scenes that does the highlighting and low lighting um, in a way that sort of gets us a little bit away along. Uh, but it's just, just so much. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And and every time I color a different piece, I just want to make uh, one mini that is literally just rainbow colors from top to end because. As you're coloring it, you need to see all the all like the end user may only end up using two or three colors and shading in many areas. The we same, need to give you the options, but we need to see that these distinct areas. So um, yeah, I have a lot of 
screenshots of rainbow colored shoes and everything's rainbows. and every everything is rainbows so excellent you know you've, you've done good if that's the, the case. <laughs> We kind of realized quite uh, uh, into this process just how granular people are going to want to get. Yeah. So yeah. We, we want it. Oh, what up, Matt? Thanks for joining us. Matt has been <laughs> has been moderating chat for a while as uh, Zerazi. Am I saying that right? Yeah. Um, thank you so much, Lindsay. Yeah. Um, as you've, you've got so much to do. You should probably I just do. Yeah, I have a lot of things to color. Thousands of plus. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, Matt, yeah, you, you've been in chat for a while. What kind of questions have you seen? seen everything from uh, different uh, like what materials can go on specific parts which you went over with like well I'm glad I covered that already yeah <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of people are excited I've been snapping images of all the positive comments oh, that's and nice uh, please the, there's the... been some interesting requests too like um, okay what do we get lay it on like, me uh, the eye shader on crystal balls and stuff like that <sighs> Which I'm like, that's a great that idea. A cool idea. Yeah. We, we talked about that. We were like, okay, okay. Well, you can only put the eyeshade of an eyes, but maybe also crystal balls, because it would be awesome if one of them was an eye. So, so we're call. definitely seeing the things you guys are posting and um, the whole survey list of wish list feature requests. It's constantly something that we're like just as excited as you guys are about it. Yeah, we, we want all that. We want to add it. And we're... We're going to be actually able to start catching up with the just the volume of beautiful requests that people give us now that we're, we have a bit more funding thanks to the Kickstarter. Yeah. Thanks for relaying some of the positivity in, in chat, um, and thank you for being so so positive in chat. Uh, the, the the nice things that people say when they like message customer support or uh, or post on social media uh, it really is it's, it's heartwarming to see such. Uh, such positivity and it really kind of fuels us to to, to keep going and make amazing stuff. Um, let's talk about what you do here. Like, we, you don't just moderate Twitch channels, of course. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> moderation is kind of like a side thing since we have the Twitch stream going. But I'm basically a tech artist, asset librarian, so I'm doing some of the modeling and also most of the parts that we get in. I'll actually take a look at, make sure stuff's working. And I'm getting more and more into, uh, like, say, the posing part of it and also the color stuff. Just <laughs> yeah. like you see on the, the gradient on the angel's wing, stuff like that. We're all working actively to figure out both the features that we already have in um, the races that, like, Kabolds we just released yesterday and the stuff that we've teased on the Kickstarter page, but also the new stuff that always trying to have something to to give you guys yeah and you pretty much have had a hand in nearly every asset that comes out yeah, these I've, days is I've the... at least <laughs> <laughs> done something to every single asset um, so yeah thanks for keeping that like the the assets flowing our treasure Tuesday releases will continue um, we hope to add more and more to them and uh, uh, thanks for joining us on stream Matt um, yeah. and Matt will be back in, in, in yeah I'm gonna hop back into the other room but Thanks for joining the stream, and it's been great to talk to all you guys and see all the excitement, and just, it's been breathtaking how far we've gotten, and let's see how far we can go. Yeah, thank you so much, man. Thanks. <laughs> Hello again, Nora. You, you've Hi. become co-host now. I sure well, have. Welcome to co-host. Thank you very much. It's good to be here. <laughs> very happy here. <laughs> I wanted to talk about all the stretch goals. That sounds good. There's a, there's a lot of them. There's um, a lot. The, the success we saw really early on definitely left us in a place where we're like, wait, some of our wildest ideas? Yeah. Maybe not? <laughs> yes. It, it made us mobilize very quickly and we we're like, oh, goodness, we could probably get some of these incredible ideas we have to users. And, and what we didn't want to do with the stretch goals was um, basically stuff that we're, we're planning on kind of having in the pipe anyway. Um, we wanted at least as best we could. Um, these are things that are like a part of color, in addition to color, or just new things on the site that we might not uh, practically be able to develop without mm -hmm. the, the funding for them. Mm -hmm. um, the support for the community is, is huge for that, to mobilize that. And that's what's starting to you know, unlock as we go yeah. along. Yeah. 
uh, sort of aside from the stretch goals, we're basically just going to be ramping up the team, mm-hmm. uh, and with a larger team, we're going to be able to ramp up production, which is mm-hmm. which is really exciting. Um, uh, but also, we're able to commit to these things and stretch goals where we're like, okay, now we're very confident we can do that. Yeah. Now, it's possible some of these things might have been on her horizon eventually. Mm-hmm. Like, with a small team working at um, the pace we currently can, we might have seen some of the things in stretch goals many years from now. Mm-hmm. Um, which, uh, or we're sort of, I think what we're promising with this set of stretch goals is that we can, the vast majority of them, we can kind of get to. I'm going to say it out loud. I think we can get to them this year. All right. I mean, that, that, that <laughs> made my heart stop for a second because there's, there's a lot. Um, but our, our stretch goals have been very carefully researched to the point that we can start feeling. I would agree with that. We have definitely explored a lot of what we're looking at to the point where I think it's comfortable thinking about an estimate. For yeah. That. I, think, I think that's fair. And I think that's also great to have as a goal um, for our you know, our users to know about and for us to, you know, aim towards. That's a, yeah, it's an idea. Absolutely. Uh, anyone in chat who has some kind of questions about the stretch goals? Um, I know that each uh, one of the goals has been, we've been fairly vague. We haven't like gone into detail about like mm-hmm. what exactly the scope and what's in there. Um, and part of that is just like, we want to potentially even expand even further um, under that umbrella. For example, face customizer. I think we, we probably have to talk about face customizer. I think we should. Yes. <laughs> yeah. The face customizer. <laughs> We had to do some sort of dev tests just to see, is this really possible? Just because there's so much interaction between pieces on the face, can we load that up into a browser, still make it look good? And the, the first tests were like, okay, mm-hmm. yeah, this is getting is interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, after sort of the, the amazing amount of support, we were like, okay, let's let's put this on there. Let's, yeah. let's see if we can hit that. Um, and. Uh, Make it a real, make it a real thing. Absolutely, <laughs> and that'll be so good for customizing your character even further to really get that exact character visual that you're looking for. Of all the th- the thousands of requests we get daily, <laughs> daily, <laughs> uh, maybe not that many a day. No, it might be that. It's quite <laughs> it a lot like of day. Um, of all of them, very few of them have actually been for facial customization, like within humans. And mm-hmm. part of that is when you're dealing with miniature scale the features on the face end up getting pretty lost. But when you're seeing a character kind of, like you're visualizing it there, Mm -hmm. when you're you're seeing it full on screen and you add color, it starts to matter so much more. It does, it really does. And I think it would be something that would be really um, rewarding for users to be able to have to put that final stamp on their character to say this is exactly that character. And there's a lot of tech that goes on behind that to make that happen. There's a lot of tech there. So it's that's why it's a stretch goal is because there's so much to consider there. Um, but it does seem like a really fun stretch goal to reach. Yeah, I'm, I'm psyched <laughs> that we get to make that. Uh, yeah. People are asking about the epic bases and kind of like how they might work. Oh, epic bases. <laughs> so cool. Um, so you guys have seen one epic base that's there. We would love to offer so many more, and we will now because of the Kickstarter. This has been something we've been wanting for a while too, something to break up the silhouette of your character, something, you know, it, it, it gives context of where your character is at. It can be so many different genres, designs. Um, it kind of makes the character into more of like an art piece in a way. Mm-hmm. It, it makes it into its own little diorama. Yeah, it does. And, and there's something just so fun about peering into that little world. Yeah. Like, we really wanted the, the uh, familiar to be on the base just to kind of show how that can complete the scene and that little, mm-hmm. that little world, that little piece of this, uh, a little piece of imagination. Oh, just, <laughs> yeah. I, I, little, I had a little tear, it came out of my eye. It's so sweet. <laughs> uh, or it could be post apocalyptic. Yeah. You know? Uh, <laughs> so, we are really looking forward to developing those, and we have this one here already developed, but I mean, I'm sure you can go wild with your imagination about what those could look like. And, and weirdly, a base is another one of those things where you don't you don't get that many requests for them. People mm-hmm. aren't like this. This base is an, an integral part of my character. But when people saw the the epic bases and the Kickstarter, they were like, "Oh wait, that's really cool. That really fleshes out the world around the character right. and looks awesome." Yeah. Um, uh, we were like, okay, all right, let me, we, this is worth exploring further. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I think there's a lot of ground to explore there. Uh, people were asking what kind of the pose, pawn, the pose options for the base will be. 
There's some technical challenges. There's some technical (laughs) challenges there for sure. Um, When you think about it, you need a base that feels organic and real, um, not stilted, yet you need a character on it that's going to be able to be scalable. Um, You have to have different types of legs that work on it. You've got a lot of considerations when you start playing with the base. Some of the epic bases will lock your character feet to them Mm -hmm. because they're made for specific poses. Like This one Mm -hmm. is a great... like. If you're gonna choose the this this epic base, you're gonna want some element of your character interacting with this sort of jutting out spot. Right. They're either looking over it, they're either leaping off it like an angel. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll end up probably making per base poses or per, per base sort of formation poses. And offering a really nice range there, so you can you can get something that feels menacing, that feels victorious, that feels curious. Yeah. We're gonna get you those poses. Yeah. Poses yeah. is another fun one too. I. Um, I mean, poses impart so much character. Having the advanced posing menu is so fantastic. And I mean, as we've seen what you guys have done with the characters. That was my favorite part about that release. I I, I knew it was a cool feature, but I didn't realize how much my mind would be completely blown by users' contribution with their own poses. I don't know about you, but I look at the Creators Guild every day during my downtime, and which is not much these days with how busy we are the Kickstarter. It's been a lot. Um, but yeah, well, I'm, you know, getting ready for heading home or something like that. I run through it as much as I can. And seeing the user contributions to the Creators Guild is a huge inspiration. It's it's really fun to see what you guys come up with. Yeah, so keep posting huge joy. your minis, keep linking to them. We love it. Uh, everyone else has been loving this, just the just the amount of creativity that goes on the around here. Yeah. Um, what else about stretch goals? Um, can, we, can we tease it some to come? We shouldn't. We, we, we could. We, we, you know, <laughs> with so much power of Kickstarter goals. I, you know, I think we should be, you know, I think you should make the decision. <laughs> I think I'm in the wrong chair to make that decision. And therefore, I leave that to Tegan. I'm, I, I think I'm a little, like, I'm renowned for letting things slip a little too early <laughs> at this point. And so I was like, what did you tell people, Tegan? <laughs> <laughs> the marketing team is going to have words with you yes. tomorrow if you're not careful. We've we've already promised so so much, um, right? With those stretch goals, um, and those are really important to us yeah. to deliver on very fully. And it's something that we are looking forward to delivering on very. What fully. what were the latest? Did we just post uh, heavy weapons? So we have. Heavy <laughs> I hope so. I just. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what were the four the five of them, Chris? You you just posted them. I don't think I don't think they put up five. I think it was three. Uh, so okay. I think they. I don't want to start saying then. <laughs> Say all five. Maybe that's a time to call Josh in. <laughs> no worries, I'm no. just teasing. We're uh, good. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure we did heavy weapons and we did the... Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm off screen making hand gestures because I'm not sure if it's okay to say them. We're being cagey on I'm, purpose. I'm going to tell yeah. you the uh, stretch goal that I think I am most excited about but also is going to be probably one of the most epically extensive undertakings on our part this is the like this is the blow all of our minds wild expectations finale kickstarter stretch goal like the most epic one and i don't hear have. anyone running from the other room i know they ran and i shouldn't tell them i'm gonna thumbs up or thumbs down all right i'm gonna say um <laughs> Because because it's so close to my heart, and, and I thought it was something that we would never ever be able to budget. Hi Fox. Being able to do. Hey would Fox. Would you like to take the chair? It's, it's weird. You like you emerged just when I was about to talk about things I probably shouldn't talk about. That was weird. Yeah, no, Have you introduced Fox? No. Uh, should we should we, we should bring him on? Fox. Come on over here. Thank Fox. you. No, we'll bring you back. Yeah. That would, yeah. <laughs> this is a good time for you to take the chair. Fox <laughs> is marketing director for Hero Forge, and it's yeah. come to save me from myself. Yeah. Let me get you out of my head. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> so stretch goals. Yeah, yeah. Now there's been uh, lots of uh, really cool stretch goals. Lots of things we've had to uh, put together to make sure we can deliver all the cool features you've all wanted. And we've had a lot of time to think about the goals and make sure everything we can do is delivered to high quality and really awesome. Um, so you were going to reveal some stretch goals that perhaps might not. Just, just the one. Just because it's so close to my heart, and, and I, my heart was kind of broken when I realized the practicality of this was, was so minimal. Um, until we, we saw such a massive community support for it, and I was like, okay, maybe we can get that. I think I know which one you're talking about. That yeah. one is okay to talk about. Okay. Uh, I, I spent 
I think, weeks and weeks in, in a sketchbook, sketching this one out. It was something that would require a lot of, uh, a, lot new, a lot of new systems, uh, a flexibility that we've never really seen before in, in Hero Forge, uh, and also cover a lot of bases in terms of user requests. Um, and this, like I was saying, this is, what, this is the furthest, stretchiest goal possible. Uh, and that is custom weapons, like Weapon Forge. The that, ad <laughs> that was not the one I expected you to say. But that one is, <laughs> that's a thing we're doing now. <laughs> I can already see my, my marketing map just falling apart. Good job. <laughs> we'll adapt. But go on, th this feature is awesome. <laughs> see, I was going to drop like more familiars or posable side items. Oh, yeah, I you were going to do that. But you went right for the no, money. You they, went right they, for well, yeah. sword yeah, maker. No, this, is, maker. This, is the, this is the wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely, definitely a thing. I can also hear art department having a heart attack right now <laughs> from the other room. So good job on that. Like, like really <laughs> legitimately, I don't, I don't know if we're going to be able to get there. Um, uh, in terms of just justifying the, the cost and the development it would take to make a entirely custom weapon system. Um, but I spent like I, I spent a lot of love um, like sketching this system out uh, and it was kind of like sunsetted like a, a little while ago. We were like, okay, it's just it's never gonna be viable. Um, we just aren't gonna get the team. We're gonna have the team to make this work. Um, so it is <laughs> Surprise. Surpr yeah, yeah, thanks. <laughs> very close to my heart and very, very exciting. <laughs> it, it's one of those things that running a campaign like this really allows us to bring not only your wish list items, but our wish list items to life. It allows you to bring you the things that we really want. And that's why the Kickstarter is so important So and the success is so important to us because we finally get to do all the what if cool things. Very well put. And. Uh, reach them earlier than we were ready to talk about them. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's, it's, it's such a tease. What if um, everyone else's ex his experience is the same as mine? We're like, oh, what about this thing? Oh, this is going to be really cool. All these, these ideas, start, your head starts spinning with possibility. Um, customizing hilts of swords uh, uh, with uh, the types of blades and the size of them. Being able to uh, make a, uh, a pole arm that just has whatever you want on both ends or even splitting like octopuses. yeah splitting options um uh, and and fractal weapons who there's just so many possibilities yeah you just labeled a lot of possibilities that i'm gonna have to go write down to make sure we can do them <laughs> um and and i and i am a little afraid that i i i've gotten everyone excited in the same way i was um but like legitimately the amount of dev time and and work to be put into mm -hmm. something like that is is very prohibitive. Um, that is to say, we have to prioritize things, mm. and we're going to be prioritizing a lot of things before that. Um, so, uh, I, so I hope we can we can mm. we can have an amazing finish. But <laughs> yeah. So, so before I go back to readdress all my marketing <laughs> stuff and and all that, um, <laughs> the more closer goals that we've just re released, we've released heavy weapons, you know, giant guns, uh, heavy firearms, that kind of thing. Some um, really cool stuff in the works for that. I heard some people wanted more mounts. Like I think people might want like bears really? and goats to ride I and like, seen like that other one. things. Yeah, like what? it's kind of kind of popular. Like, yeah, like who wants a bear to, that you can ride? I mean oh, that man. seems pretty awesome. Not me. Um, <laughs> the full list of uh, availability of additional side items, kind of like how we did back items, being able to put them on your sides and twist them around and pose that them a little bit. That is the most challenging place to put them. Yeah. Um, it, is... it interacts with so many things. Yeah. And, and after this, we're like, okay, uh, again, we're sort of we're, we're going to be able to ramp the team up. We're going to have the dev power in house to make some of these more complicated mm -hmm. like things work. Uh, let's 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 go for it. Let's put it up there. And then, like the last one, I want to tease. But this one, I thought you were going to tease, but I'm just going to. Uh, <laughs> one of the other things we get a lot of requests for is more familiars. So yeah, familiars are definitely on on the list. Um, and yeah, this is so cute. And this weapon forge thing. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna go back. <laughs> Thank you, Fox. It no. turns out you couldn't you couldn't save no. the stream from over here in that. No, 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 just don't. Reveal anything else? <laughs> I, I, I'll, I, I think you, I'm... You have to give me something to tease the marketing. <laughs> I'll keep, a, keep an eye on what's... That, that was your job. You know, I had one job. <laughs> That's I why one I, job. Got a, I got a co-host later. Fox was like, someone's going to need to go in there and keep Someone an eye on him. Uh, that, 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 that's, that is exactly what happened. <laughs> Just for everybody, that's exactly what happened. <laughs> can't do that job. Can't... 
can't put a lid on. We have uh, we do I, I do have more things to to sneak out there. All right. I do. Now the well, box is well. gone. Oh. Wait, no, this is my job. This is my one job. No, is this a test? You can't do that. <laughs> oh, no, no, he, he, he approved this one. Oh, fantastic. Okay. <laughs> um, all right. So we, we showed a sneak peek on the Kickstarter itself of kind of our vision for Hero Forge 2.0 UI. Yes. Like... Oh. Yeah, we're back. Um, this uh, this beautiful new background that's really color. We needed to bring the background into color, so we're like, okay, let's make mm -hmm. let's make this new scene that really sounds it. Yeah. Um, so we gave that sneak peek, but uh, obviously there's going to be more work to do on, on that. That's mm -hmm. that's there's going to be a lot more of a revamp. Mm -hmm. um, and we've been working with um, working with artists to make that possible. Let's see if I can press the right buttons. There we go. Um, so, oh, that's confusing. Um, so this is the mock-ups for the Hero Forge 2.0 UI. There we go. And we're looking at the lower right corner of our screen. For yeah, the let, let's switch to, uh, to your yeah, website only. There we go. That's, there we that's go. That's confusing. So this is the 2.0 UI for Hero Forge. Yeah, it, work in progress. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of refinement left to do. And I wouldn't read into the free zombie heads being there. That's <laughs> we're not adding free two more zombies that look exactly the same. <laughs> uh, but it is a mock-up from sort of a visual standpoint. I think it's starting to look really nice, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's looking fantastic, and I think it's helping to show this whole new color world that we're getting into. Yeah, which is just you know a leap forward, and you know the UI should reflect that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, it's it's starting to look really slick. Uh, I want to shout out to Studio Punchev for working on it with us. Um, we can probably get a link to their studio in the chat. Um, uh, they we've been kind of working with them to just iterate on and, and make this as beautiful as possible. Like really uh, do the UI justice in terms of like I guess getting that excitement that comes with making a new character. That yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's there's almost a video game feel in some regards in that you're feeling so much energy as you're creating this character, looking at the UI. There's just a whole different energy that you're, you're breaking into. And I, I love that we have, you know, a, an interesting visual new representation of how we're going through our main categories and then breaking down into more subtleties and then um, just updating every slider and every, every graphic. And still making it look really exciting and beautiful, but... Mm -hmm really easy to use at the same time. Very easy to use. We want to keep everything as easy and as fast to use as possible for users. That's yeah. important, I think. Right? Like, yeah, a uh, whole thing is there's an incredible amount of technology that goes on behind the scenes to make this work. And it's massively challenging, but we want the, the window to that technology, the, the place where you interact with it and make these characters to be super easy and clear. Yeah. So uh, the question here was how do we make our UI revamped and beautiful, but maintain a clarity and simplicity to it. Yeah. It took a lot of self-control not to like put like <laughs> fantasy borders on everything and... <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, you know, we have people that are really into sci-fi. You know, I, yeah. I, I want to make sure that I'm feeling like I'm in, a, I, I'm in a UI that can support whatever genre I'm in. And that, that's important too. And, and yes, we cannot border everything with beautiful gold fantasy trim because we know we'd do it to the nth degree yes. and it would be too much. You know it would be good, but it would be too much. It, it'd be too much. <laughs> and then we'd let you customize the the, the details on the UI oh, yeah. itself yeah, and then we'd let you out. change the yeah. yeah the, the lighting <laughs> source on it. It'd be it'd be the Hero Forge style of doing save the UI. it Save it for the photo booth. <laughs> right. There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, and... Uh, Shout out to Kraken as well, who provided some really cool dice for our Kickstarter. Uh, just to show around our minis, and we've also been using them. Um, I uh, admit to, I never owned a pair of dice until Kraken sent us some. Very like, nice. Like, I'd owned a million pairs of dice, but they'd mm -hmm. never been like, this one was mine. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh wait, this one is. Do you want to showcase those a bit? I'll do some of the table. Like close up here. <laughs> <laughs> here. Uh, it's always great to, we love, like, I mean, not only using dice in context of playing games, but actually showing them in the context of like minis and stuff. And you want to you want to get a sense for scale, so we always have dice in, in miniature shots. So mm -hmm. thank you, Kraken, for uh, for providing those. 
perhaps an, an elephant. Yeah, look at that. See? Mini for scale. Mini for scale. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. We can what, only get so close there. What else can I reveal before Fox comes back? Let's see. We've got mere moments before. <laughs> before we, are we are definitely out. winding down. We should probably get the final questions from yeah, the stream we uh, um, as well. If we have any more ones. final questions from the community, um, write them up now. We'll try to get a few more answered before we wrap up for the day. Yeah, while we're gathering a few questions in chat, um, I, I want to I want to talk about one more thing, um, and this one comes with a big catch. This isn't going to be a stretch goal. It's a highly experimental possibility of color printing, um, and and we can keep this camera just for a second. You won't be able to see it uh, very well, but. This one mini um, that I'm about to put here is, is, particularly, uh, is particularly interesting and special. Um, you might just be able to get a slight shot of it. You and can get closer if you want. Oh, let's, let's do this. Yeah. Let's, let's walk all the way up to here and then focus. Just, just give me a second. Focus. There you go. That skull on that mini is transparent. Uh, and I think that's very, very exciting. But what it kind of means, what, what it just it hints at. Um, this is some uh, experimental uh, tech with the, uh, with the color printing that we're using. And well, we, can, we can switch back here. Uh, that'll work, yeah. Uh, this is some experimental tech. Um, and the possibilities, the, the mind-boggling possibilities of transparency, Are 3D printed transparency. Epic. Yeah. Epic, I think is the right word, isn't Epic's it? Epic's a really good word for transparency. Like, like imagine a character like swirling off a base and then there's a the big swirl of smoke cloud that's all transparent and mm -hmm. translucent. You can do some amazing flying stuff. The spell effects. The spell effects. So number one, if you control wind or anything like that and that brings you up into the air, like getting that transparent, awesome. Um, being able to have, should we mention it, a spell effect with something within it, like a skull? So the skull could be colored, and then all the magic around it yeah. just see through. It's, I mean, when you start thinking of just only that, your brain can go many different places about how cool this could be to use on your mini. I mean, do you have spectral characters that need to be somewhat see through? Right, in theory, you could transparent the whole mini. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what if you want to see like a skeleton inside of <coughs> a person? I mean, you could be able to do that with this tech. It's it's and very exciting. Mm -hmm. um, like you couldn't paint that. That, right. that could only be three D printed. This <laughs> fox is back. Fox is no. giving me a look from this. Like not more things. <laughs> I got it. The, the, that look. I'm gonna sit here and just. <laughs> I just wanted to think. Just that. <laughs> Um, I just, it's too exciting! It, it, it's very exciting, but you know what's also really good for exciting? Marketing. <laughs> That's fair. We have a um, lot of exciting things on the boil that we're it, looking it, to it's try. Also, yeah, it, it's also fair to say that this one is, is very much a, a, a who knows kind of big question mark. This yeah. is just a, like, it's a possibility down the line. Um, we're very interested in watching like that tech evolve and, and what it means. Yeah. Um, These are things that are like would be really really cool to do in the future that are far off and are things that we are starting to peek at and just see. Yeah. Hey, could this be a thing? Like you can only really posit at the future of three D color printed miniatures and right. how like we saw this with uh, uncolored ones mm -hmm. where the detail got better and better. Mm -hmm. The durability got better and better. We have been improving it year after year after year and seeing better and better miniatures. And the same, and we're in a great starting point for color. Like these are fantastic yeah. starting points. It really is. It's only going to get more detailed. It's going to get better. And more materials. Like I, I imagine a day when the metal has, it looks like metal, it's shining mm -hmm. with light. It's reflecting light like metal would. It's too cool. The it's skin it, has subsurface scattering like skin. Whew, that's good stuff. These are, I mean, I think what's cool about bringing up some of these things, um, even though you have now brought Fox behind us <laughs> to watch us, to watch over us. I'm just here for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's so cool about it, I think, is also letting um, our fans and our users know that we're really constantly looking towards the future in a big, 
brave, bold way. And that's been true ever since I've been here. It's been really cool to make these generational leaps a lot, constantly. And I think it's super healthy to have really fun, awesome goals far off. I think we get really excited by them too, which is great. And there's always going to be really great stuff like that that we're going to be looking forward to and want to want to start peeking at, want to look at. And that's with the support of all our community, we can look at that stuff. We can start saying, okay, well, what if? That, yeah, absolutely, completely agree. Um, uh, let's get a few questions from chat. Um, we've got some in there. Let's see if we can run down the list since we're wrapping things up soon. Don't we have anything uh, else? I, I will <laughs> not let this happen. Uh, we asked uh, if we considered a Zazzle style marketplace for creations. Um, I think uh, the we definitely have thought about what it what it means to be able to search through and and share in a lot more streamlined way. Like user creations are so cool that being able to find them really fast would be awesome. Um, but I think putting like an additional cost on them would be would be a little like kind of beside the free spirit of sharing all of these creations. So I'm I'm not sure we kind of a marketplace more just a some really powerful sharing tools. Um, someone wants just a million minis uh, for free. We'll send them right over. Um, <laughs> Sorry, we, we can't. Uh, we just only left the room two seconds ago. <laughs> two seconds. Stop saying things. Um, uh, uh, Peon asks, uh, can we show the Epic Base interacting with the miniature? Uh, we don't have that demo working yet, unfortunately. Um, yeah, that'll take a, a bit more R&D to really get fully fully fleshed out and locked down. Yeah, yeah. I can't see most of the chat. I'm just going to scooch this away so I can. Um, uh, Close-ups of the uh, colored printed angel are just not going to be best in this format. We haven't got the canvas set up properly for it. We do have some high-res posts um, that you uh, we can probably post in chat um, and you can find on our social media. Um, Let's see. We might be wrapped up on most of our questions. Um, what character types are we not considering because of the technical requirements? Now, I think I can tell you that if we're planning on doing six armed characters, we've kind of said, you know what, <laughs> we got this. <laughs> we're gonna like d technical constraints be d be damned. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna make this work one way or another. Um, I, I, there's always a balance between something being technically difficult to implement and. Um, it's demand and how soon we want to implement it. Yes. So small demand, high technical bar means it might be years and years away. Right. It's still on the list. It's still something that we talk about. Um, so it doesn't get lost anywhere. But then there might be things that are, have a lower bar that are really frequently requested. And we know we can hit a lot yeah. of our users if we focus on this and get that out. And then we can start looking at the higher technical bars for some of the more difficult things that are less requested. Another question from chat is, can we make a mini um, with a two inch hex square base? Um, or hex or square base. So uh, minis are even really larger. Uh, right now, because of the breadth of different materials we have, um, there's a lot of kind of constraints in sort of printing size and so on. Um, it's definitely on our radar what it would mean to like get even larger minis and have them two size. Cause like uh, you can though right now on Hero Forge click the little plus more button and print a two times scale miniature, and that will be on a uh, on a two inch base. So you can just double the size of the whole thing, um, but it won't be the same like scale as uh, as the other miniatures. It won't quite match. Yeah, yeah. That sounds about right. Let's see. Do, do, do. Got some questions about transparent materials, and we just we don't know yet. There's a lot of like like I was saying that's highly experimental, um, and. We have all those same questions as well. <laughs> um, Not base textures base for, textures. for normal bases, just like just different toppings. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we do want to offer more of those. There are more to be offered. There are more areas to be in, more details to be had there. So yes, those are in progress. And I think we'd underplayed them perhaps because we'd got so few requests, but. Mm -hmm. Uh, the epic basis kind of show just being able to visualize your mini mm -hmm. in a scene is kind of really powerful. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, will you be able to put shaders on the base just like other parts? Yes. Um, 
uh, you'll be able to put shaders everywhere. Uh, one thing that wasn't shown was we'll probably let you put a different color on the top of the base as the sides. Mm -hmm. um, personally, I really like when there's a bunch of miniatures and the only thing tying them together thematically is that every base is the same shape mm -hmm. and same color on the, the edge. Like that's the border of this miniature's world. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll be able to give users that. Uh, we're asking about the four armed option. Um, Corsair, uh, we already have... Uh, Oh, sorry, right. Uh, can you do forearms? Yes. You'll be able to pick between, uh, well, two, four, and six arms. Uh, we've also been working on, and it wasn't very clear in the stretch goal, but we, we have it going on, um, uh, missing limbs as well. Mm -hmm. So you should be able to get all the, the arms in between as well using that same system. Yeah. Um, yeah. Zero arms. Yes. That, so you missing. You can you can have both your arms missing. Um, that was that was part of that stretch goal in terms of its customization, but we didn't quite. Um, in those options, yeah. We didn't show it visually, but right. um, it was planned for it. Uh, basically, it's, because it's being worked on right now, yeah. like as we go through it. Yeah. yeah. Because you can add a robot arm. You could also just mm -hmm. have no arm there. Let's see here. Will the arm sliders allow for big, thick forearms like sticks or Popeye? We got some questions about sort of body morphology pushing further um, later, uh, earlier, and probably not in its current form. We had talked about like how do we push things further and the possibilities, but at a point, all this detail that we add just morphs out of kind of being useful. And uh, let's do one more question. Uh, custom images on banners? Yes. Yes. Uh, well, custom decals, as in you can use your own decal. But I have a feeling they might be hinting at something more, um, which is can they? Can you upload your own image? Is that what they're suggesting? It could be, and I don't know if we are yet at a place to start. Uh, obviously, we've like thought about what it would mean, um, and there's a lot of complexity with like uploading your own stuff. Um, we want to make very, very powerful tools, but um, there's a there's a point on which like cans of worms are open, so. Um, I, well, I don't think we have an answer for that yet. And then what if I mention one thing about maybe monsters? Mm, I'm, nah. Okay. okay. We, should, we, should, we, should probably we should finally put the lid on things? <laughs> well, that's yeah, we should nice. wrap this up. All right, that we sounds should, good. We should wrap this up before we spill all our beans. Yes. We need a few beans. <laughs> <laughs> there are more beans. <laughs> <laughs> there are more beans that I'm glad we did not mention because we have so much going on behind the scenes. Yeah. So. Uh, it is, it's been such a pleasure chatting with everybody. Uh, I, thank you for coming and hanging out, asking questions, checking out our UI, um, uh, hearing us spill the beans. Yeah, hearing us spill um, the beans. Uh, sharing in, uh, in our enthusiasm and excitement for tabletop miniatures and that journey and where it can go. Mm -hmm. and. Just massive, massive thanks to everybody who has backed us or shared the Kickstarter around. Yes. Like, Thank you guys. Huge thanks. We see just this a massive outpouring from the community and it's the support is feels endless and it it just gets us so excited to bring you yeah. everything. We, we everything. Every guess. <laughs> all, all, all the things. <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, this is gonna really uh, kickstart us into uh, into being able to ramp the team up and finally kind of meet this just uh, amazing demand from everybody. Um, it's it's so exciting for us to be able to grow in that way too. Yeah. Um, so again, from the bottom of our hearts, um, thank you, thank you so much. Thank um, you. Uh, everybody, have a lovely one. Enjoy your D and D sessions and your other tabletop RPG ses sessions. Uh, have have fun on Hero Forge. Enjoy the new editions every week and keep uh, forging. Keep showing us what you're making. <laughs> yes, please. Uh, keep keep being excited about new stuff. Uh, User requests. Keep them coming. Yeah, yeah. So, thank bye you. Bye, everybody. So much. Good night. Uh, we'll try to do these streams more regularly. So hopefully it won't be so long until we say hi again. Um, I. <laughs> bye. Oh, I'm just like just turning out the lights. It's really cute. <laughs> now it just looks like we're walking around in the dark. <laughs> it got dark in here. <laughs>